NextRoundLive.com, NextRoundLive.com. We also have an app. Uh, you can find the app at Next Round, the Next Round. Is this T-shirt store. for sale? This T-shirt is for sale. We have to trade off with somebody. <laughs> this hat's for sale. Yeah. This T-shirt's for sale here at Odie's. Uh, oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I need yeah. somebody ask Dunaway for a refill before we go. He's <laughs> yeah. wearing an Odie shirt like he works here. When AB walked in, I stopped him at the at the <laughs> counter over there and said, <laughs> "We're on a, we're on a wait." Sorry, we're on a wait. I thought you were going to guard him. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did get the Odie's hoodie a couple of weeks ago, the gray with the green. Yeah, I saw yeah. you wore it the other day. I like yeah. it. Nextroundlive.com, our website. You follow us on all social media at Next Round Live. Uh, we're going to get you back to the games just a little bit, but a little bit of a lull here. So we're going to talk about some of the games. We've got a table of Sanford. Are you guys Sanford students? Sanford yeah. students. The Sanford uh, pregame right here. Let's go. Sanford pregame. That game tips uh, about six hours from now, but they're, you know, they've <laughs> got okay. I, I do want to get a confirmation for these guys. So I had somebody reach out to Sanford grad, and he said that Sanford students were told to get their work done in case you guys win because the last time there was a big upset, St. Peter's beat Kentucky. St. Peter's website went out. Right. And so they were unable to log in for studies and stuff because so many people were going to the website to check out what St. Peter's was all about. So Sanford always already get in front of this. Is that true? Did that go out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not sure these guys I, are going to class in a while. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you never know. Urban yeah. legends get started, but I yeah. did hear that today. That's right. What's the feeling on the Sanford campus from you guys? What's the feeling? A lot of optimism. Okay. Yeah. I All picked right. them to win. I think yeah. they beat Kansas. Yeah. They're in my bracket going now, on by one. These guys are new to the show. That's bad news for this you. This is the guy that yeah. had BYU to the Sweet 16. <laughs> yeah. I did have BYU to the Sweet 16. Yeah. Yeah. This like guy, that. too. This guy, too. I lost BYU earlier. Yeah, but I, I had them beating I, Duquesne, but I didn't have them advancing past round two. All right, so here's yeah. the problem. So advantage you already. Yep. Here's the problem. Not, uh, not sweating that at all. I did my brackets, Lance, and then I'm watching the game today, and they show this Duquesne coach that looks like he's about uh, a mobster. Uh, he's like an 80-year-old, like he's the retired Don that they go back yeah, to. Yeah, Coach Dembrock. Yeah. yeah. They ask, and they're like, this is his final ride. He's retiring. I'm like, oh, great. I'm going against a team that's got a coach retiring. Did you know that coming in? Yeah, so I heard it during the A-10 tournament. Okay. The guy's been coaching literally forever. And, again, they go on this miraculous run in the A-10 tournament. They get the automatic bid, and – Boy, I mean, they just – they played toe-to-toe. Even when BYU came back and took a leap, um, this team just uh, – I, I don't know what's going on. This is not a Duquesne team that you saw in the regular season, but this is what happens in March sometimes. Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, Samuel in the chat says, uh, YouTube, everybody thinks the 12 fives is where the upsets are, but it's actually the 6-11s. So the 12 five is I, – I brought this up. It is trending in the wrong direction. You know, there was a time when 12s always beat fives, but three of the last eight years, you hadn't had a 12 beat a five. Two fives went to a final four last year. So I think that trend has died down a little bit. One thing to look at when we get to the second round is six seeds. If you have a six seed moving forward, they don't beat three seeds. So six over three is not the way to go. A lot, a lot of times you'll see a 12 advance <laughs> on into the Sweet 16. I don't have to sweat it anymore because BYU got beat You're in right. the first round. Didn't have to worry about them losing well, the next round. This is funny because I had – I've only got BYU going to the second round. I knew you had them in the Sweet 16. I forgot Brown did. I did, yeah. So, I was pulling against them early on. And then I started getting texts from my daughter, Layton. And she's like, do you think BYU can come back? And I didn't know why she was so invested. I know she had done a bracket. But I called her at the end of the game, and I'm like, that was a tough loss. I was like, but who do you have in this next game? And she was like, well, I'm out, right? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, I lost a game. And I was like, <laughs> nobody in the history of March Madness has ever had a perfect bracket. She thought she had to have a perfect bracket. Yeah, it's, one in, it's, yeah. it's, it's one in 120 billion or something yeah, like I that. I said it was, like it was one in a zillion. Yeah. A zillion's not a number, but yeah. it's one in a zillion. Nobody's ever done it. Um, so she can rest easy now. I wouldn't have pulled so hard for BYU, not that it mattered, if I would have known that's what she thought. Uh, BYU loses. Are there any Alabama fans here? Anybody here in Alabama fan? Alabama fans? I know there's two okay, right we here. Few, we got a few back there. They're too cool to cheer, though. Yeah. If there are Alabama fans, you do not want to do what BYU did today. You're going to lose, too. BYU 8 of 24 from beyond the arc. And that is where they live. They take more three-pointers than anybody in the country. Brown, I don't know if you've watched Alabama basketball lately. It's been a long time since they've made eight three-pointers. Well, that's what I'm saying. They'll <laughs> lose to Charleston if they're 8 of 24 from beyond the arc. Well, I've got, be a tight I've got a question. Um, Mark Pope, former Kentucky Wildcat, the head coach of BYU. Because this Jackson Robinson kid off the bench, by far their best player. Yep. And I, I don't know. Like, I would have made every oh, possession wait, that guy's got. He played 35 this, minutes and scored 25 points. Wait, can we get off a the quick timeout? Show. Hey, a Kansas guy's about to walk in. A Kansas guy's about to walk in. Can we boo him? He's yeah. walking in. Boo, Kansas. Where is he? Rock Chalk, go home. 
Rock Chalk, go home. I don't see him. Where he just he? walked by in a jersey. Oh, he didn't walk in. Boo, Kansas. He, no. he knew better to walk into this Sanford establishment. <laughs> okay, back to what you were saying. Yeah, uh, Rock Chalk, go home. Is yeah. what Dunaway is giving him. Uh, Odie's Edgewood is the establishment Dunaway is referencing here. The brand new Odie's. Fantastic location. Uh, more Sanford uh, folks and, coming and, in. And this down, thing's about to rock. In downtown Homewood. If you watched the NCAA selection show and saw Sanford, reacting to their uh, bracket placement. It was just to our left right here, right out here on the street. Yeah, and I heard it was an incredible scene. You know, so like I, it. I'm familiar. I told you guys this used to be a HUD's grocery store. This is when I would put quarters in literally the old video games back in the 80s and play them on the grocery right right outside yep. of where the produce was. Let's Sanford. go, Sanford. Sanford. Let's go. Sanford pregame. Uh, that's, that's so I uh, grew up around Kansas here. Kansas fans are at the Frothy Monkey. <laughs> and you know where Dawson Memorial is. I do, yeah, but right they down the basically block. had this all the way blocked off to Dawson Memorial, and um, everything was shut down, and and it was completely packed out. So really a good scene for Bucky McMillan and his Sanford Bulldogs, and I can't wait to see that game tonight. I got a feeling it's supposed to tip at 855, probably 920-ish. We'll be up till midnight tonight. Next to last game of the night, Drake Washington State is the only later game. The game is on TBS. Uh, If you're hanging around the house to watch it, uh, you'll have it on here at Odie's. And then tomorrow, Lance, at both Odie's locations, Obviously, it is a sports bar or a bar or a restaurant's dream come true in this part of the country. You're going to have UAB, Auburn, and Alabama play back-to-back-to-back, essentially, tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. And uh, a lot of people are going to be heading to spring break tomorrow or Saturday. Uh, We will be out on location from 1 to 3 tomorrow at Walk-Ons. And uh, then I'm going home, and I am – I've got – a you're birthday going to party I'm supposed to go to. It's quite a day for you. I think I'm going to tap tap in and out for like five or ten minutes because yeah. uh, tomorrow night is a great couch night. And the way YouTube does their lineup, we kind of had a feeling. Yeah. I went home to eat a quick lunch from Sterling and the guys at Champions before I came here. And while I was there, I put on the YouTube and the four box, how they do it, it's perfect. Yeah, uh, that's that's yeah. what that's what Paul says, Dunaway, right here on YouTube. He's got the quad box going right now on YouTube. I think perfect. we're in his quad box. Yeah, I don't perfect. Know. perfect. So so back in the day, you guys know my layout in my basement. So I've yeah. got the I got two bigs, I got uh one on one wall, one on the other, and then I've got the four on the top, thirty twos. When I pulled the plug on direct TV, they're they're kind of obsolete now. So I'm just gonna pull those down, put one more big up. And because of the YouTube now, I've got 12 different games going. Yeah. Better than it's ever been. Better than it's ever been. Uh, Dave says the multi-view is awesome. It really is. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about some of these games that we have already seen. And we'll start with the first game out. I was going to try to pull up this comment real quick. Um, we talked about BYU. We'll come back to that. I was Bad gonna, Mississippi yeah. State. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Chris says Mississippi State out coach Tulu only had nine attempts. Yeah. I mean – you know, Smith is such a good presence down low. I thought Josh Hubbard, if, if Mississippi State was going to win this game, would be the difference. Hubbard goes for 15. Smith only has five field goal attempts. Um, it was weird, but it, it seemed to me the game got away from Mississippi State early. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they pretty much led by double digits the entire game. Tyson entire game. Walker's best game of the year for Michigan State. Played better than he has played all year long for them. And um, if he plays like that, they may – they may Izzo this thing up and get to the second weekend. Yeah, I, I don't know about you guys. I I see a different North Carolina team. I, I think there's I think there's two people in this bracket, the field out brackets, people that are pro-Carolina, people that are anti-Carolina. Okay. I'm more anti, although I've got them to the Elite Eight because I think it's an easy region. But some people watch Carolina, and they see this 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 team that could win a national championship. I just don't really see that. Yeah, yeah. Just because you you saw them in the Final Four, right? Or did they win it all a few years ago? No, they, they lost in they the lost, national championship right. game. They lost. Yeah, they lost in the to national Kansas. championship game. And you see Baycott still there, so it has that look of a team. You forget that they missed the entire tournament. Yeah, Armando year. Baycott is a guy that's got a ton of experience. R.J. Davis, first team All-American. I mean, they've got – some they've, they've got some studs. Well, I for whatever I still don't trust Dave yeah. Davis. Well, so let me just say though, back to state and state, Michigan State, Mississippi State. Uh, Chris James would not be the first guy out coached by Tom Izzo. That is at a, a a very very long list of college basketball. Coaches. I don't think he was out coached. I think I think Mississippi State struggles to score yeah. the basketball. They and lost by fourteen. They did. A, they did. I don't I don't know if it was an X's and O's. Or excuse thing. me, uh, lost by uh, eighteen. Yeah, they, they have Hubbard's their only true really. Outside Score. shooter, right? Yeah, he's 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 really the only guy that you, you, you need. Not one that more. Michigan you need State's one more. got a lot of scores either, and they played their worst basketball down the stretch. So I thought the game was a coin flip. I told you before, I took Michigan State, but I kind of wanted to flip back to Mississippi State, but we were already locked in. Um, I don't think 
I, I really don't think it matters. I think Michigan State, although Izzo seems to capture this this um, March, you know, magic, and, yeah. and I think he's been to the second weekend sixteen or seventeen times, which is incredible. I see him. Danny uh, Manning. He's a Kansas fan. He's got a Danny Manning jersey on. By the way, can you guys give me a better one player run than Danny Manning did in nineteen? The, the only thing close is Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony, and then uh, not Rip Hamilton. Who was the kid at uh, for UConn when they weren't good just recently? The little guard. Oh, yeah, I know who you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. that um, when they made a run. I, I Kyle, know. who was it? Kimball Walker. Kimball Walker. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, Kimball Walker. They, and That was the guy I saw at the Steakhouse in Chicago. You remember yeah, that? Wait, yeah. I can't believe you pulled that. It was so random. The only reason I pulled it is I had just watched the NCAA tournament the year before, and he just had a distinctive look. And uh, I was at, uh, oh, what is the famous steakhouse in Chicago? Gibson's. Gibson's. I was at Gibson Steakhouse in Chicago, and they were in town. I can't even remember the – I think it was the Hornets at the time, right? Yeah. Or they might have at that time. Might have been Bobcats. Might have been Bobcats. Time. But anyway, the Charlotte franchise, they're in town, and him and two other guys are in there. I told my wife, I said, that's Kimball Walker. And she goes, who's Kimball Walker? How do you know him? I said, well, I don't know him at all, but he's an NBA player. But I'll go. Those are the three greatest carry me jobs I've ever seen. Kimball yeah. Walker, Carmelo Anthony. Oh. And Danny Manning. Richard's got the all-timer, Steph Curry. Now, he didn't make it to the I national lead eight. Oh, my God, it was David. Yeah, but, but I still think those three guys single-handedly carry teams to national championships. Yeah, yeah, for national championships, you're absolutely right. All right, so 69-51, Mississippi State falls to Michigan State. First game out of the shoot. Now, if you don't listen to our show every day, we encourage you to do that, nextroundlive.com, or just uh, find us on YouTube next round, download the app. Next round, give us a thumbs up, subscribe on YouTube. We greatly appreciate you doing that. Next round live on all social media. Next round live and next round live on YouTube as well. Um, These two make stake bets on almost anything. There's really nothing off limits. One stake bet is uh, SEC teams into the Sweet 16. You've got how many? I got under three and a half. Under three and a half. So you've got the over. So Mississippi State didn't factor into that at all for either one of you. No, and South Carolina's not looking good at the half. Oregon's got a comfortable well, – I said comfortable lead. They're up seven. South Carolina hit about a 70-footer going yeah. into the locker room to cut it to six. Uh, but I think I'm about to have two teams eliminated, so we're going to be down to six in the SEC. A lot of people are saying Mateen Cleaves, back to your other. But that was the Flintstones. That was a pretty good oh, group yeah. of players. Because you yeah. had uh, Mo Peterson, yeah. who was really good. Yeah, you had some players I on I mean, that Mateen team. Cleaves was obviously a very yeah. good player. I mean, he was the best player. He was yeah. the mop. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know that he drugged them in. All right, so 69-51, uh, the final there. Let's go back to Duquesne-BYU. Again, BYU led the nation coming into this game at three-point attempts. They only got up 24. That's actually under their average. And they only hit eight, also under their average. Again, if you're an Alabama fan, your style of play mirrors a lot of what BYU does. It'll be awful news for you. But Duquesne gets the win, 71-67. The 11th seed moves through to the next round. Um, I know we all had BYU, right? Every one of us? All of us. Uh, yeah, all yeah, of yeah. Us. Okay. But I had them going to the Sweet 16. I did too. Yeah, so I was – it's actually a pretty good loss for me in the first round. Yeah. So, uh, so Duquesne advances. They keep the coach alive. Uh, Creighton. And by the way, this is literally, a, literally, alive. this is a Duquesne like team. Right. Just recently lost five consecutive games to St. Joe's, Richmond, Dayton. Uh, who is this team? Oh, Loyola of Chicago and UMass. Yeah. I mean, this was not a great team in the regular season. Um. Also in the early slate that we have just watched, Creighton defeats Akron 77-60. to Now, for those of you that care about people's brackets, we have a bracket challenge on our show. I've got Creighton in the national championship game. They are one of the top five teams in the history of basketball for NCAA tournament, appearance, uh, tournament appearances without a Final Four. I think they break that streak this year. They beat Akron 77-60. to Just kind of a workmanlike win for Creighton 77-60 to over Akron. Yeah. And the Mac had been so good in these situations against the number. I stayed away from that game totally, but I had a I had a feeling that Zips would play a lot better. But uh, Kalkbrenner, um, I mean that that's a really good team. Well coached, Greg McDermott. Every and- starter in double digits. Kalkbrenner had twenty three. Uh, you got nineteen out of Alexander, uh, fifteen, ten, and ten. They did not get a single point off the bench. All five of their starters scored all seventy seven of their points, but every one of them are in double digits. Not that's kind of what you get. Bench not not one bench point, Lance. Not a single bench point. 77 points out of their starters. And one by 17. Did not get a bench point in one by 17. Yeah. That gives you an idea how good their starting five is. They can they can play much better than they did. No doubt. Yeah, so it was scary early on for them. 
Uh, side note from basketball, just as I got just finished a, a transaction. Tell me if I made a mistake or not. Is this in my bookie? Oh, I, I saw him. I saw him wearing out the Venmo a yeah. second ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just picked up two tickets for Zach Bryan tomorrow night. It's going on right when Alabama's playing. But Alabama should be okay against Charleston, right? They don't need oh, me. I don't. They I don't need me in front of the TV, right? I can go see you Zach. Ain't, Bryan. You ain't a fan if you're going to see yeah. Zach. Have Bryan. you? Uh, is anybody else going I to the Zach it was Bryan? Jim, Jimmy Alabama, Jimmy Roll Tide. Anybody else going to the Zach Bryan there, concert? There's a good chance that what, Bama nobody, will... else, nobody else in here. Is, oh, well, there's oh, one yeah, guy. Yeah. There, there, Are you there. an Alabama fan? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I mean, there's a good chance. Not really. Bama, Bama will be over by the time that we go. I'm gonna watch it in the parking lot and then boom, jump what right time, in. What time does he hit the stage? Nine o'clock. My daughter's gonna be there. Of course, she's a teenager, so don't you know? He won't go on until nine. It'll be fine. I'll see the end of Alabama. No, you'll see the whole. I game. just can't do the post game. Well, that's you, you fine. Have, you have well, to cover that with yeah, a little tea. I'll, I'll handle that with a little tea. Okay. So that's good. I get Zach Bryan and the Tide tomorrow. Okay. That's right. All right. I didn't even know Zach Bryan was in town. Two shows. Well, you're not a big country guy. Yeah, two shows. I couldn't two even shows. tell you one song yeah. he sang. Yeah. Which uh, means three chicken guys. fries in town, too. That's right. Uh, trust favorite. me, I know why you're going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has he sold out the – has he sold out <laughs> Legacy Legacy Both twice? Nice. Oh, yeah. Shows? Oh, yeah. He's, he's a big act now. Yo, ticket prices. Uh, our friend Woody and Poochie told me their tickets are four fifty dollars piece. Yikes. I bet Woody didn't want you telling that on the show. Uh, you Too late. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no rewinding that one, Jimmy. Uh, they were gifts from somebody. <laughs> sure. I'm sure everybody yeah. knows the price of a gift. Yeah. All right. So 77 cents. They put it on the steel company. They? <laughs> <laughs> they got clients. <laughs> Back in the day. Hey, I need you to write this invoice. I know it says two tickets. <laughs> Can you write it for four? 7760. Uh, Craig uh, B. Tackard. All right. So, well, by the way, they told me to tell you all that. Uh, since the expense report's in a different situation oh, now, yeah. we, yeah. we, haven't, we yeah. haven't gone to dinner with I haven't one heard time. from them. Yeah, yeah. I know. But they were they were pointing out that the they phone works both ways. I know. I know. <laughs> the we, phone we, works both ways. We never took them, so yeah. I can't say anything. Yeah. Uh, all right, Long Beach State. Speaking of coaches that are getting fired, this guy's already fired. Dan Monson was coaching what it turned out to be his final game of. Uh, I guess his coach agree. You think Dan Monson? Yeah, I think he's again? done. I think he's done. Yeah. You know, he's 17 years at Long Beach State. I think roughly 10 years at Minnesota, two years at Gonzaga. So the guy's been coaching for 30 years and, you know, probably wasn't making, obviously wasn't making the money that a lot of these um, power five coaches made when he was at, at Minnesota. But I still think the guy's probably a multimillionaire. He was in a good spirit when he addressed the media yesterday. We played the clip today on the next round. Hey, I'm working for free. You guys ask me whatever you want. Uh, he was having fun with it. They were loose. They played really well in the first half and, the athleticism and well, sides of Arizona just took over that game. Dunaway knowing that I have Arizona win this whole thing. Like, in this first window, I had Creighton, who Akron was hanging around a little bit with Creighton. And, and they cut and, it to 12 with four minutes to go. And Arizona, that's my national championship game, Creighton playing Arizona. And so we're still at the studio watching, and the whole time Dunaway's like, Brown, tie game. Arizona's in trouble. Yeah. Arizona's in trouble. 33-31. Yeah. And Dirtbaggers. I'm like, Dunaway, it's the – First half. Well, it's I really when 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 it was really tight, I was like, "There's no way," because I've said this all day too. Arizona's not going to lose that game. But I started to think, "Damn, I've got Arizona the Final Four. But I was like, "You know what? I'd like to see him lose because Brown's got him the Brown's win. Win. Yeah, it's right. already over. That like, at least cancels it out. Oh, I, no, it, I think it would be over. I, think, you I did this. I had that's the, what I'm saying. It would cancel out. You oh, have yeah. the Final Four. He had he had lost at that point. He had lost Mississippi State. Yep. Yeah, well, that's he, one he, game. Though. He had lost BYU. That's two. And then games. that game was trending. I had the dolly and I was walking down the hallway and I said. Hey, anybody want to help me move uh, something to the garbage? And they're like, what are you moving? I said, Brown's bracket. Yeah, that, that <laughs> way did that joke in every office in our suite. Um, Have we bought the handcuffs yet? But the, <laughs> hang on. That said. I got to put some context to that for everybody here. Yeah, by yeah, the way. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to the handcuffs. Yeah. That said, I told Dunaway when he was making that joke, I said, right now, Dunaway, right now, I'll give you Long Beach State plus 20 since you're running your mouth. I did not take that. He did not take it. Dunaway, have you seen the final score? Was it 21? I said a great line. Yeah. It was 20. Yep. 85-65 Arizona over Long Beach State. Well, our friends at Blakely's Bouquets are out there. Hey, yeah, of course. They're good are. people. They love the show. Across the street here. Yep. Um, Arizona can lay a stinker. They can. Uh, I mean, that's a huge risk for you, both you and I. I've got a little more at risk than you do. With them in the championship, actually winning it all. But yeah, they can I mean, lay a stinker. Yeah, they're tough to trust. I mean, Tommy Lloyd, I think, is a really good coach. Sean Miller was, you know, he was Arizona such really good years. But at one point in time, we called him the best active coach to yet to get to a Final Four. But the fact of the matter is they haven't won a national championship since they came through Birmingham in 1997 with Lute Olsen. It's been a long time. And that's a good basketball program. Yeah. 
So Arizona has been a historically great program. They advance 85-65 over Long Beach State. We just watched North Carolina wrap up. 90-62 over Wagner. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you say about this. Not a surprise at all, North Carolina. I watched like the first five trips down the court. They just dump it down to Baycott. Wagner's got like a 6'4 kid on Baycott. And Baycott just absolutely dominates him going to the basket. Yeah, and, you know, Wagner was a dog in the play-in game on Tuesday night, and they were fortunate to get out of there with a win. Seahawks, no match. North Carolina kind of goes through the motions. Uh, you knew they were going to win. It was just what the margin of victory was going to be. Yeah, 90-62 to 62 was that margin of victory done away. Now, this is thought to be the weakest number one seed, North Carolina. Yep. In my opinion, they are, according to – all the metrics, which the is, Ken Palms and which stuff. Which is weird because most people would also say they got the easiest road to the Final Four yep. of a one seed. Which is just what UConn should have got as the number one overall seed. When UConn got the exact opposite They of that. got the most difficult one. It yeah. made no sense. It's amazing how games change. Remember this one up here that was right above our head, Illinois, Moorhead State? Yeah. It was close at the half. Oh, Moorhead was down three or four. Yeah. Now it's 78-56. Yeah. yeah. Just a blowout city here with Illinois. Well, I think it shows you. Let's talk about that game. 78-56 right now. Illinois is on their way to winning. You you always say every time we come, uh, we talk about Illinois, uh, you talk about how good they play defense. Uh, well, look, and Brad Underwood, really, really good coach yep. um, from Oklahoma State to now Illinois. But you got a, a player in Terrence Shannon Jr. who really took over the Big Ten Conference Tournament en route to the Illini winning that. And this is a guy that wasn't eligible before the season. He's got some serious legal issues. He filed an injunction against the NCAA and the school to allow him to play. I that's, like that. I mean, that's bold. Yeah. And it's it's really it's a bad, bad situation. That's an so, interesting NCAA tournament storyline. You don't get that one every year. Yeah, the, the deeper we get on this tournament with Illinois, the more that story is going to pop back up. But anyway, with all that said, Illinois is a really good team. I wanted to see them get bounced. I think I've got them in the Elite Eight. But I've told you guys I'm not afraid to pull against my bracket if it if it means chaos for you two. Terrence yeah. Shannon has got 26 in this game. He's good, man. 26. Yeah. Is he the guy with the injunction? He's, he's the guy with the injunction. Yeah, that's yeah. him. Injunction, that's junction. Injunction, What's junction. What's your function? Well, by the way, um, if Terrence Shannon wasn't playing, they wouldn't have won the Big Ten tournament. Oh, they wouldn't be so, leading this game yeah, either. they wouldn't be leading this game. So he's that good of a player. By the way, 13 of 16 shots South Carolina missed. To end the uh, first half, that. but I love yet how you keep jumping in front. Well, I'm just saying they're only five. They're only five down. It. We're just now coming back. I'm just we're coming back, <laughs> starting the second half here. Just wanted to point that out. Late, lazy, lazy South, South Carolina. Carolina. Well, let's talk about but, it. But they're only five down. Oregon, South Carolina, 34-29. Well, you're, you're speeding through the games way too fast. Well, <laughs> I've got to because you do keep bringing them up. Uh, Oregon, South Carolina, South Carolina, Dunaway, nine of twenty-eight from the field. Nine of twenty-eight. Yeah. So, again, for those of you that don't join us. By the on, way, that's not lazy. That's shooting a lot of shots. For those of you that don't <laughs> They're join, lazy on rebounds, apparently. For those of you that don't join us daily, Dunaway says South Carolina, who Lance over-exceeded every single expectation of them, right? Uh, they Le over Lamont Paris might be your national coach of the year. He's your yes. SEC coach of the year. They yeah. won, uh, what, 15 where, games, where, where, 13 where, games? Hang on, you hold on. You hold on. He's where, great. Where, I said great. you hold on. Yeah. Where were they picked in the SEC? Dead last. Uh, dead last. Yeah. Dead last. Where well, did they finish? Uh, Fifth. Not dead last. Yeah, fifth. about fifth, right? Fifth. And, and Dunaway fifth. says they are what? The way they're playing in big games down the stretch, they're lazy. I've seen them three times. They're the laziest team I've seen in person. Uh, Mac, Mac has put on weight all season long. He gets bigger every game. I, I don't know if it's lazy. Maybe people are just taking them a little more seriously, and they don't have the talent of some of these other teams. I still think they're going to come back and win this game. You think they are? Yeah. Okay. I don't think they will. 34-29 as we talk live here. Oregon leading South Carolina 34-29 as they just start the second half. Uh, again, I'll go back to the stake bet. You're under three and a half on teams in the Sweet 16 down away from the Southeastern Conference. Lance is over that. And I think, Lance, this is one of the ones you were counting on maybe getting there, right? No, South Carolina? He wasn't counting oh, on I South had South Carolina, Carolina in the Sweet 16. Yeah, Did yeah, you really? But I had six teams in the Sweet 16 from the SEC. I even had five. Yeah. I'm, you, I'm not overly worried about this. Yeah. I, I have uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, Auburn in the Elite Eight at least, maybe even Florida. 34-29 is the Oregon lead right now. We'll come back to that as these 40 games to 31, actually, not to jump in front. But, oh, I'm sorry, 40 to 31. Yeah. It had not updated. I just saw My, apologies. Your My apologies. It had not updated. Uh, let's talk about Nevada and Dayton. That game going on right now. Oh, really? Yeah, 25-24 just before the half. Dayton has the lead over Nevada. So that got your attention. Why did that get your attention so much? Um, because I just had not seen that yet. Okay, Dayton so. is a 
<laughs> bet you know they're playing today, right? Oh, I do. Okay. I just, I, I, I not found my TV for that yet. It's our first play at Lance's Lock and uh, – our second play, actually. And I've got Dayton in the Sweet 16. All right, Lance'sLock.com. Again, I, I realize some of the people here in the restaurant at Odie's aren't, aren't familiar with our daily show. We're trying to educate them. Lance makes picks every single day at Lance'sLock.com. Does a great job with that. He's got seven plays up today, right? Yep. Your free play, free play is Iowa State. We'll get to that in a little bit when we talk about the uh, late slate of action. Any results yet? Uh, yeah, BYU, 0-1. Oh, 0-1. Oh, 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 you can <laughs> always count on Dunaway. Way to bring it up, Jim. Way to bring it up, Jim. I didn't even know which one it was. Every, I thought maybe, every, thought maybe, goes maybe, I, is he not on the text? <laughs> I thought maybe it was 2-0. Actually, actually, he's not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we need to put him on the text. I don't yeah. know if it's going to stop him from asking that question. Yeah. Uh, 25-24, Dayton and Anthony Grant leads Nevada, the former Alabama coach who – uh, many will forget COVID probably, uh, in just in sports terms, I'm just talking in sports terms here, robbed Anthony Grant more than anybody in sports terms. That guy was on his way to being definitely a one, maybe the overall number one, some people thought, and they didn't even have the tournament. Yeah. And let's just say that, 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 you know, chalk rules in that situation, you know, a final four for Dayton possibly. That's, I mean, who knows? A national You never know. Yeah. Obi Toppin and that team, they were really, really yeah, good. Yeah, Obi Toppin could play, couldn't he? Yeah. And unfortunately for, yeah. and this is their first appearance back, so. Yeah. I thought they would play with the chip on their shoulder. They are now down 30 to 25 with a minute and a half to go in the first half. Um, so Dayton was up five. Now they're down five. And uh, obviously a lot of big runs. So uh, as we talk live, Illinois uh, has it in the bag. Uh, Oregon and South Carolina battling Nevada and Dayton battling. We'll uh, keep you updated on that. So as a reminder, if you're watching us online, we are at Odie's Edgewood. This is a brand new Odie's location in the Edgewood area of Homewood. Uh, just a fantastic facility. If you've been to the Odie's, the original, in Crestline Village, this looks like um, the exact same Odie's except double the size. When you when you say that, yep, I would say that is. Yep. Uh, I was talking to Ryan, one of the GMs, earlier today, and I was like, I love the nostalgia of Odie's and Crestline. Yep, but I like. It's like this is just kind of the. The new big brother, next where it's generation, just a little more expanded. Yep. Yeah, next yep. generation. Yeah, next generation of Odie. So it's a fantastic location. Garage door windows, yep. walk spaces. So it. we've already got Sanford fans holding tables here, even though their game is not until late tonight. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna have a they're gonna hammer a few uh, beverages and get ready for that game. You can watch the Sanford game, but then tomorrow as well at both Odie's locations, full day of basketball with UAB, Auburn, and Alabama playing back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. Odie's is a great place to watch. That's a great place to come anytime. Oh, uh, yeah, ice-cold beer buckets. Uh, I've got the Stellas right here, Bud Lights, whatever you want there. Uh, incredible food from Rodney Davis. I don't know if you guys are going to eat later on. I, I had did. The- we came here for lunch yesterday. Dunaway had the Diablo, which is my favorite. No, I did not. I had, remember I had the club sandwich. Oh, that's sandwich, right. Yeah, you almost went Diablo. And I passed in the fries and went with chili on the side. Club sandwich so and chili. club and chili. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I went south of the border roll up last night with that. the side of the spicy sauce, that, that yep. uh, pink sauce. So good. So good. Yeah, south of the border roll up, the Diablo, great, great, great thing. Do you know what Maddie's uh, go to is? Big cup cocktails. What she have? Every time, the corn dog. Corn dog. Hey, they got a good corn, corn dog. Like here. a first grader. Yeah. But it's good. It's, all right. it's a good corn dog. Yeah, they got a good corn dog here. You so, order it crunchy. Odie's is a great place. Edgewood and Chris Line Village to watch all the NCAA tournament action. Uh, including tonight, Sanford game, Jimmy Dunaway. Before you get to the chat, a couple of things. First of okay. all, Taylor Korn is safely in Spokane. That's right. Some she's, people were asking. She's we got win? our coverage yep. uh, starting a little bit later on tonight and uh, throughout the day tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday from Spokane. So she is out there. Thanks to our friends at Autograph. Uh, go download the Autograph app and use code TNR. It will. Uh, it's free with that code. Code Je- TNR. Jeff's asking about little Tish. Yeah, she made it okay to she Spokane. She's there. She's, got she's the in, her, yep. in the hotel, ready yep. to go, and uh, we'll be pumping out coverage, including if you haven't seen it, she was on the same flight with Nick Pringle. Paul which, brings that up, Nick which we Pringle. should talk about. Yeah, let's talk about that right now. So Nick Pringle, uh, Alabama big man who has been in and out of Nate Oates doghouse. Is that a good way of describing Nick Pringle? Yeah. Yes. Have you heard the story of what happened? I, have I told you on the air, did I not? Oh, I don't did know. You? I don't think you did. I did when I told. I said I'd heard that he was not on the flight. Did I? Well, yeah, but I don't think you don't told think the you whole got story because I, I, okay. I have been told, but I have not been told to a level that I'm comfortable saying it on the air. But if you have, go right ahead. I, I, I from what my sourcing had told me, he had another altercation. Yep. Uh, verbally, verbal altercation. Okay. Yeah, verbal I was going to say, let's clear that up. Yeah. With, uh, with the, with the coach, with the head yeah. coach, and. uh you know, a little sideways as some words were said. And uh, what do you think the head coach? Boy, it is a different world. Like, I, and here's the thing. If I'm Nate Oates in subordination, I wouldn't put up with it. I don't think there's any place for that anywhere. Um, 
I would have booted his ass off. Uh, well, but, well, I think he did. I think he said, um, we're getting on the charter. If you can make it out on your own to Spokane and then apologize to the team and they want you back on the team, then we'll do that. If you don't make it out to Spokane on your own, I'd like the locker cleared out by the time we get back. Yeah, and look, and I'm a second, <laughs> even third chance guy. Yeah, well, how many times has this happened? Well, he had a two-game suspension earlier yeah. this year for an off-the-court. He ain't that good. I mean, that's all I got to say. But but he is a body inside. He is. I get it. And, and they need a body inside. So, you know, it's 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 a catch-22 because you are doing a disservice to the rest of the team because they do need him. But at the same time, you can't let a guy get away with talking back to a coach like that. On In a front of his team, especially. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, emotion takes over sometimes. You'll give a pass here and there. But if it continues to have on a bus in front of the whole team, my God. Yeah. Now, he – I don't know if he – you know, we check with some reports and check with Taylor. But when the flight landed, a quick ride to the Coliseum would have gotten him there in time for the shoot-around. I do not know if he was on the court for the yeah, shoot-around or not. Taylor, was Taylor headed to the shoot-around? So, uh, we'll it, text her and see. It is. The, the news conference and the shoot-around is wrapping up out there. Yeah. And uh, that answer already is on your text there, Brownie. And uh, I, I will tell you, I don't know if Nick was made it to the shoot-around, if they've had the conversation about um, – but from, from sourcing, you know, he, you know, doesn't start anyway. Well uh, – Likely, we'll see what playing time he gets against Charleston. But if he's dressed out – because he remember, he – the earlier suspension this year, he wasn't at one of the games. And then the second game, he had to come back and embarrassingly sit on the on the bench in street clothes. Yeah. So suspended not even with the team one game, then in street clothes on the bench second game, which is a public display of suspension. All right, let's say right? – yeah, absolutely. That <laughs> yeah. is that is the purple walk, right? That right. is the walk of shame. Yeah. And then one fan said to, said to be on Twitter today, I can't believe that you sent out that video of Nick Pringle on the plane. No, and, and who I, said and that? I, yeah, somebody on, on Twitter, and I was like, "Why would they say that?" And then you you had the same point reply I had. I said, "You think Nate Oates would be mad about us?" No, I think, that I think Nate Oates yeah. is glad Taylor was on the same flight. That's right, because you know what Nate Oates is going to do when Nick Pringle shows up in Spokane. He's going to pull up that tweet yeah. and say, that's a good look, isn't it, man? That's a good look for you. good look. You, you, know, watch, you know where we all were? Yeah. We were on the charter. Well, yeah, you watch right. Game of Thrones, so I'll do a Game of Thrones analogy here. Oh, Cersei I know you're going. Yeah. Shame. 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 I mean, shame. hey, look, sometimes you got to go to major extremes. Flight of shame. Across. It was a yeah. flight of shame. It yeah. was. It was. And I guarantee you, now, I don't know that – I'm pretty sure Nate Oates would be aware of that tweet. There's enough people around the Alabama basketball pro program that follow us on Twitter – that would see that, and I would not be stunned at all if Nate Oates, when Nick Pringle showed up, said, all right, there's your look right there. You happy yeah. with that? Yeah. You're and on a it, yeah. commercial flight. By the way, making a connection in Salt Lake City, not flying direct like we did on a charter, making a connection in Salt Lake City. That's or who Denver, you are. Or Denver, wherever well, it was. And look, yeah. Denver, wherever it was. And yeah. he's showing out above the team. That's the vision in the team in the biggest moment right now of the season. Yeah. It's unneeded. Yeah. By the way. And he's not that important of a player to the team. That's why, like, to me, I know he's a body, but he's expendable. So let me ask you guys this. Let's assume Nick Pringle plays two games in this tournament. Let's assume Alabama beats Charles State plays both games. Give me his total points. Give me your over-under in his total points those two games. Two games, I will say that he goes for 12 points and 10 rebounds. Oh, combining both games? Yeah, Yeah, combine both games. So Lance's total Uh, points. 12 and 10. I'm thinking he's about a 6 and 5 per game. That's his over-under. I was going to say he averages 8 and 5, 8. You know, maybe if you get 10 and 7 out of him, that's a great day right there. That's good. Just Give one day, 10 and 7? 10 and 7. If he yeah. averages 10 and 7, I'll take that so, all Oh, yeah. yeah. Be good. So that's yeah. 20 and 14 over two games. You'd love that, right? Yep. yep. And that's what he needs to be. That's what he needs to be, man. Yeah. I'm going to pull it back. Oregon's going to win this game now. Oh, are you? SEC well, is. What has happened, Lance? Well, that, that's a bigger topic I want to get to here in a second. Well, I'm just saying the SEC well, is not training well, are they? Yeah. But, but um, right now where we are, South Carolina, um, you know, when you're lazy, it's hard to hold your train of thought for 40 minutes, and they're down 54-37. Hey, guess who had them in their final four? South Carolina, by the hey, way. I brought this. 73 ESPN experts, every all eight SEC teams represented at some point. Tom Crean had South Carolina in his final four. No way. Oh, yeah, he did. Tom Crean? I can't right, laugh. Do I add him to the 16? No, say this again. Tom Crean had South Carolina in his he final did. four. I, I don't. I see. I've this. I've seen them in person three times. I saw them in Tuscaloosa blowout, in Neville blowout, and at the SEC tournament blowout against Auburn twice and Alabama once. And this this Oregon today. team is not that great. 
No, but they're an 11 seed. Yeah. I, I mean, they're obviously playing good because they just won the Pac-12 tournament. And now, by the way, the 11 is about to win for the second time today, right? Yep. Again, these double-digit seeds happens every year. I just can't project who it's going to be. Well. Okay, I'm going to get a beer. All right. Who needs something? I'm good right now. I'm good. I'm still good with my tequila. Yeah. All right. Uh, as Lance goes and gets a beer, we're going to talk about some of the games. A little dough bell and pineapple is what we're hitting today. Yeah, Dunaway, let me ask you this. Matthew says, all Nados has done to discipline Pringle is giving him a slap on the wrist. Um. I would say this is more than a slap on the wrist. Yeah, I mean, you, how is a two-game suspension a slap on well, the wrist? Well, no, no, no. Let's let's wrist. let's put that aside. Yeah. I mean, when you take the team charter to the NCAA tournament and say, if you can find your way up there and the team accepts your apology, you can play. Yeah. I, that's that's. I mean, to me, that's a that's a pretty good suspension. I mean, that's not a suspension, right? It's pretty good discipline, though. And we don't and we don't not know knowing what he did. Yeah, we don't know yeah. yet what what uh what what the rest of it is. Like he may he may on his own dime have flown to have flown to Spokane and he may be in street clothes tomorrow night. Yeah. I mean it was a commercial flight with a connector and and uh That's right. He, and, and, he was on Denver. the same flight with Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. not to Denver, but from Denver to uh Spokane, the same flight with Taylor. Yeah. So he had to fly this morning. And Taylor left very early. What time did Taylor fly uh, out? Taylor was awake at six AM. She yeah. was wheels up at eight AM out yeah. of Birmingham. All right, so little T's out at eight AM. So Nick Pringle from Tuscaloosa. That's right. They don't fly commercial out of Tuscaloosa. Right. He's got to get to the Birmingham airport. Hey, how are you? We got a little girl about to come up here and make her picks. Uh, Nick Pringle from Tuscaloosa to Birmingham on his own, flies to Denver, then makes the connector, probably up at five. I mean, that that's not a fun day of travel, especially if you come up there and if Nate, what if Nate Oates gets him up there, it's like, oh, by the way, you're not playing. Yeah. Now you sit in you sit in your street clothes on the bench, but you are not playing. We will reevaluate for game two. That's right. Yeah. If there is a game two. Yeah, Charleston. But if there's not, not a game two, it's probably your fault. Yeah, you missed our walkthrough. You know my rule. You don't you don't make the walk. Now he could have made the walkthrough. Taylor was on the ground and yeah. time for him to make the walkthrough. That's I right. don't know. Or the and, shoot around. And Taylor said he was scooped up really quickly from the airport and, and taken to the Coliseum. Yeah. I don't know, man. That is a uh, that's an interesting deal with uh, it's pretty embarrassing. I mean, I think oh, that's I a pretty good completely. suspension. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree completely with yeah. you on that. Um, give me a second, Jim. But, but they hold. need the bodies. They yeah. need the bodies. So, if you're asking me, Jimmy, Jimmy, Alabama, do you play Nick Pringle? Absolutely, I play yeah. Nick Pringle. John says Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Arkansas are Big Twelve level. Most of the Big Ten. Bandy is a Ivy League school. So let's talk about the strength of the Southeastern Conference, which I know when Lance gets back. Well, we're yeah, about let's save that for Lance because it is yeah. a big topic here. But um, the SEC hasn't won yet, right? No, they're only one zero oh, and one. Well, South Carolina one, can come back. No, they can. But they're what only, is that score right they're now? They're only down seventeen. Yeah, lazy though. I mean, are you able to erase a seventeen point lead when you play lazy? Seventeen. Well, I mean, maybe it takes that to wake them up. Maybe this is their uh, eighteen points down. Maybe this is their commercial flight cross country trying to wake <laughs> them up. Uh, but they're down eighteen. Could be nineteen when this free throws over with, and we'll see if they've got any fight left in them. But this is trending towards looking the way miss free throw eighteen points now. This is trending looking the way it looked in Tuscaloosa and yeah. in Auburn and in Nashville. All right, you want a little play on words here? Michael Pringle, once you pop off, you can't stop. That's right. That's right. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Oh, as soon as we say this, there's a big three. They've cut it to 15. Here come the Gamecocks. Uh, no, they're lazy, Jim. Go ahead and say it. They're lazy. No, nah, 15. Big three. They just cut it to 15. Yeah. South Carolina. All right, so let's have the bigger comment we're going to have as Lance returns uh, with one of his uh, – what well, we got to hear, Estella. I don't know why I'm asking you that because I know you very, very well. That's, of course, Estella. Um, yes, Ice Cold Stella. Ice Cold Stella. So Got a good little crowd building here. This is going to be a yeah. fun atmosphere tonight, especially oh, for this Sanford Kansas Absolutely. Game. Again, we are at uh, Odie's Edgewood, the Homewood location in uh, the Edgewood area of Homewood, right here on the main strip. Um, here, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the Southeastern Conference. I'm going to give you guys some um, some comments about the Southeastern Conference and see what your thought is on that because I know we're about to talk about it anyway. If you miss this, I'll give John's again. He says Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Arkansas, they're probably still Big 12 level, uh, Big 10 level, Vandy basically an Ivy League school. Well, Rod I Roderick says SEC already pulling their losing shenanigan ways to the dance. Mississippi State blowing out South Carolina, getting waxed by double digits. Can, can I bring this up? Because Please. the Big 12 was brought up. The only team we've seen play in the Big 12 is BYU. Yeah, well, no, they that's, do. That's my point. Yeah. Well, oh, have you already the, said that? The two best yeah. the, the two best conferences all year are right now 0-2 and trending. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll tell you one thing. I do yeah. not 
you know, I don't know why anybody would listen to what I do in bracket picks because I suck at them. But I do think I'm right on this. I, I don't think you can get sucked into the conferences everybody says are the best conferences in the country all year long and pick based on that. Like, if everybody says, oh, the Big 12 is clearly the best conference in the country, all right, well, I'm going to go heavy Big 12. The, the, I just don't think that really factors into the NCAA I, tournament. You're, you're probably right historically, but I do remember in 85 where you had three Big East. I remember, I think it was 2000 and early 2000s where you had three ACCs. So, I mean, we've seen conferences, you know, have dominant tournament runs before, but probably, probably traditionally year in, year out, you don't get that. Do you do you buy into conference power or perceived conference power? Because that's the other thing. I don't know that we really know. Like people make their judgment about conference powers and the Maui Invitational and the uh, the battle for Atlantis and all those things. Right when you get the Great Alaskan Shootout, Great Alaskan Shootout back ago. in the day when you had all those teams play. That's when we make our judgment about conference powers in these one-off games where Kentucky plays North Carolina yeah, and but, stuff like that. And I just don't know that we get a really good reflection of when you have conference versus conference, who actually the best conference even is. I mean, you get a lot of teams, big-name teams, playing big-name teams in November and December. I yeah, think right. that's when you, that's when those uh, reputations are uh, founded. But and, so much also, can change it, it, also, that March. it also skews the metrics. Big, big teams no playing doubt. big teams. Just yeah. look at Alabama. They get a lot of credit just by playing that tough schedule in November and December, and that's kept them high all year long in the uh, in the metrics all season long. Uh, you know, do I go by total conference pride? No, but I do think when it's all said and done, the top of the SEC and the top of the Big 12 will be okay. Uh, Slushy says the SEC and lots of Power Fives are criminally overrated. I don't know about that. Hey, did somebody say we look worse than uh, without makeup? Uh, they did. <laughs> uh, Rohan says y'all look older without the day show makeup. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not makeup. It is whatever the lighting is in the studio. I don't personally think it's good. It's bright. Um, well, he's saying we look older here. Yeah, that's I, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah like, I, I would say lighting and camera better here which is giving you a clearer look of what we really look like. Oh, so yeah. – yeah, okay. I, I think I look – look, I don't think I look good at all, but I think I look better here than I do in studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But apparently I look a lot older. But, but I am but, old. But, but so Chrissy, I'll, yeah, I'll Chrissy, I am old. Yeah. I am old. Now, we've been doing this show 14 years. <laughs> yeah. and I've been on local TV and radio for 30. Yeah, when you get our age, yeah. hopefully – you will, uh, you'll still be up, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, we don't wear makeup in studio. We just watch. I haven't out. worn makeup on TV in a very long time. Yeah. I finally told him I'm not doing it anymore. Wait, you did TV forever. You've done a lot more than yeah, me. Yeah. I've never worn makeup for TV. I, I did it for a little bit, and uh, it irritated my face, and it's uh, messed up the colors of my dress shirt. Hundred percent. So I just said I'm done with it. Yeah, I put a little powder on. That's all yeah, I would do. Yeah, They'd yeah. always tell me you need to wear more makeup, and yeah, I was I'm like, out. I could, I could always quit yeah. and just be well, my you're like a radio. magnum member at uh, Sephora, weren't you? I was, yeah. Magnum. My daughter loved it when her when she first started using makeup, when she could go in there and get anything for free because I had a, yeah. uh, the stuff that had been just building up over the years. Uh, Rainey says, Oh, Tennessee, hey, Rainey. Tennessee will be the only SEC team standing soon. No. Not according to the brackets we picked. You think it'll be the Auburn Tigers? Uh, I think Auburn, Tennessee, Kentucky – Florida, um, Alabama to the Sweet 16, but I think there are five SEC teams in the Sweet 16. I think there are three in the Elite Eight. Sorry, Rainey. I'm never wrong. You think what? Um, I would agree. I think Auburn will walk to the Sweet 16. I do think Alabama, it's hard to say. I think they're there. I think Kentucky and Tennessee are great teams. I think both of them are there. Um, you think Florida could win too? I got Florida winning too, Me so too. I'll say that. I said South Carolina before. Obviously, that's not going to happen now, so I'll go five. All right, five. It's not over yet. 14 point game, uh, still half a half. As Am Golfer reminds you, every team in the dance loses their last game of the season except for one. So somebody's going to lose their last yeah. game, right? That's right. Um, you just Matthew, hate to lose it. You hate, just hate to lose it before sunset on the very first day of the turn. That is true. Matthew is on Facebook. He says he hopes Florida knocks the brakes off Colorado. So let's talk about some of the later games tonight, all right? Um, just a quick spin around on well, before you well, that, that one's that that tomorrow. Can we flip it around to the Big 12 real quick before we, we sure. move it on? Because uh, we talked a lot about the SEC underachieving. Uh, Kansas and Sanford tonight, that is a Big 12 team. This Kansas team, if even if they get by Sanford, I don't think is long for the tournament, right? Well, I don't think they're long for the tournament 
in this regard because I think they're going to have to – well, I know if they do advance, they're going to play Purdue in the first round of the second weekend, which in the Sweet 16. And I just don't think – I mean, it'll be a fun matchup between Hunter Dickinson and Zach Eady, but they just don't have the depth. Purdue hits their perimeter shots at a ridiculous rate. And uh, the only thing Kansas has got going for them is, for whatever reason, Purdue and Matt Painter typically check out. Purdue is a much better team than Kansas right now. So I agree. I think Kansas, kind of their ceiling is 16. But we, I don't, I don't think Texas is long for the tournament. I think Texas Tech can win a game, maybe two, because of their toughness. But I don't think, you know, they're around at the end. Jack Taylor's got to go in the final four. I do like <laughs> Houston. I do like Houston. I know they struggle to score the basketball. Yeah. And I think this Baylor team uh, has a chance to be hot at the right time. And I think Iowa run. State, based on their oh, defense, yeah. they don't have any scores. It's a very balanced team. But Otzelberger can coach. They play great defense. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're. I mean, somebody's got to win these games. That's right. And that's so, right. That's my point. The the two, three, four at the top of the list for the SEC, I think, will be okay. And some of these bottom tiers, you know, just so happens the first two out of the gate of Mississippi State, South Carolina. That's the lower end of the eight teams that are in there for the SEC. And I think we'll see a couple of Big Twelve teams like BYU bounced early on but in the end the big 12 and the sec i think will be be in this thing longer than the big 10 and if i put the sec um i mean right now if i put their teams at a half to get to the final four would you go over or under for which one the sec yeah for the final well, four, i've got kentucky go over. there i'd still go over the half yeah, yeah. i would too i got yeah. auburn tennessee i think kentucky could be there yeah. uh important 11 minutes obviously for south carolina they're down 14 59 45 nevada and dayton have gone to the half 34 25 those are the only two games Ongoing as we speak, Illinois did close out Moorhead 85-69 for Illinois as they beat Moorhead State. Um, by the way, if you are an Illinois backer, I was just pulling up Lance, their path right now uh, cleared up a little bit for them this morning. You like Illinois, right? I do. I don't like them as much as some others. You know, I've talked about our friend Tom Hart. He's got Illinois winning it all. I saw, I think there were six or seven of the 73 that had Illinois winning it all. And I, I think Illinois is a really good team. Not going to be surprised if they make a Final Four run. Winning it all seems a little ambitious, but, but well, Jeff Goodman points out, and this is a little surprising to me. Illinois is a pretty good basketball program. I know Lou Henson yeah. was like the legendary coach that Bill Self was there before he went to Kansas. Uh, it has been 19 years since they made the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. Well, and 19 I, years. I think that was the year they played North Carolina for the national championship. Dean yeah. Brown and those guys. Bill Weber was the head coach, and uh, that was a really good Illinois team. But yeah, they've had. Good history. I don't think they've ever won a national championship, but uh, they've been really good in the past. And now all that stands in their way of a Sweet 16 berth is Duquesne after Duquesne pulled the upset over BYU. I, I am not doubting Duquesne anymore. Okay. Uh, that, I, I'll tell you, you watched that game today, and yeah. I watched every second of it. There was nothing fluky about nope. that game all. Duquesne out-hustled them. They yep. out-muscled them. They outshot them. It was nothing fluky about yeah, that game. Same against VCU in the A-10 championship. So, I think Duquesne's a pretty good team. They're playing, obviously, great basketball. They've got a ton of confidence. And the pressure's on Illinois now. Yeah. Uh, so, Oregon up on South Carolina, 62-48. Nevada Dayton at the half, 34-25. We'll keep you updated on Oregon, South Carolina. If you're just hanging out watching us, can't get to the tournament. All right, tonight, Colorado State, Texas in a 10-7 game, guys. That is the first game of the night slate tonight. Colorado, Texas. Colorado uh, State. Colorado State, excuse me, 10-7 over uh, uh, playing Texas tonight. 5.50 on TNT. MyBookie.ag has Texas about a three, three-and-a-half point favorite in this game. Texas, how do I describe them? I, lazy. I, I don't know if I would. How much of the tournament's lazy yeah. for you? I, I think Rodney Terry is not a great coach. He Seems was, like he cares about a lot of things that are ancillary, well, doesn't it? Yeah. And the he, horns down yeah, and all that, yeah. His cool glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He he got gifted a really good job, and I think there's a lot of pressure on Texas. Colorado State, Mountain West, a lot of people agree with this. They weren't really properly seated. And I, I think Colorado State, watching them the other night, and I know Virginia is a horrendous offense. Colorado State is a big, physical, uh, lockdown team, and I think they're playing with a lot of confidence. I think Colorado State wins the game. I got them advancing here. Me too. I've got Texas moving on in this one. I've got Colorado State. I can't tell you how many bunnies they're called by old school announcers, short putbacks. Right. I can't tell you how many right at the bucket baskets Colorado State missed the other night. That game could have been a 40-point game if they had made those little short shots there at the at the rim. 
Uh, again, Texas, uh, two and a half, three point favorite in that one at mybookie.ag. Oakland and Kentucky, speaking of the SEC, this team I got in my final four coming out of the South region. Uh, Oakland and Kentucky playing at Pittsburgh. It is uh, Kentucky about a two touchdown favorite in this one at mybookie.ag. CBS tonight, it's 6 10, Kentucky 13 and a half. Don't know how you feel about the CATS, 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 Cats. Um, I like this Kentucky team. Their defense is uh, somewhere between trash and um, and just uh, lazy, I guess. Well, I that, I, yeah, they, I mean, but look, if their defense was any good, like they usually is, they'd be a Final Four lock probably. Uh, we, their we, defense is awful. We might need to give you a better label, but I think that is the way Kentucky, I mean, you could sum it up. They seem uninterested at time. I don't know if they're going to be interested for Oakland. If they are, they could win this game by 30-plus points. I mean, Dillingham and Shepard are going to be probably top five to top eight picks, both of them. Antonio Reeves is an All-American. Calipari is a guy that has won a national championship. He's coached for multiple more. I uh, I think if it comes together from Kentucky, if Kentucky is cutting down the nets, not surprised at all. Well, the last time we saw Kentucky play, um, Texas A&M just worked them. Uh, in Nashville. But you had a hungry team and a non-hungry you team. You did. Texas A&M had to win it to be in the tournament, and they managed the lack of size they had perfectly against Kentucky. I, well, ju- I just don't think Oakland obviously can do that. I, in fact, these are the kind of games I hate in the first round where you really don't – Oakland really doesn't have much of a chance. I, and I, listen, I know there was a motivation difference in that game, but what scares me, Dunaway, if I'm a Kentucky fan is defense has been the problem for the Big Blue all season long. And Texas A&M was just going to the basket trip after trip after trip. And Kentucky had no rim defense, Lance. They just couldn't stop anybody going to the basket. That's what scares you. Well, when they want to play defense, you you saw Calipari call them out. It was against Auburn, right, before they played the Auburn Well, if they played every game like they played at Devil Arena, they'd lift the trophy. But I think that shows you how they've got it in this them. team yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they've got all the offensive weapons. And obviously, with their athleticism, they play great defense when they want to. I just – I don't – I don't know if you'll get that Kentucky team tonight. I do think you're going to get a lot of effort moving forward. I mean, you should. What else are you playing for? The way, well, yeah. the way South Carolina is playing in this game, by the way, they may have to finish with four players. They are fouling every time down the well, floor. Well, I mean, they're point. down 67-52. Uh, in your book, this game is over with eight well, minutes no, it's, By the way, I'm tra- they got it down to 11 a few seconds ago. Oh, they're lazy. Though. They this, is, this has been a, a fun season with Maddie trying to explain basketball. She's like, I just don't understand the fouling. And I'm like, you got to shorten the game. The only way you can make up points is right. if you shorten the game. So I'm trying to explain this, but if you are a, a a a new basketball fan trying to learn the game, it is frustrating watching a final two minutes take 35 or 40 minutes of real time well, with about 30 uh, foul shots. I don't know if you were watching BYU Duquesne, but I had a little skin in that game with BYU and the Sweet 16. We were watching in the studio before we moved here to Odie's, and uh, that last minute took forever for them oh, to yeah. play. Forever, BYU was having to foul. There were timeouts. But, you know, our television out. froze. Our television froze one minute. I mean, it was just awful. Uh, see if they ever get it down to single digits here. This will have a different feel. Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking the same thing. Well, I just don't think 10. they can. They could cut it to ten. Oh my gosh! Oh, awful. but somebody hustled after a rebound. Oh, that's back court. Dunaway. No. Dunaway he got kicked to, it back court. Did you say South Carolina was hustling? Dunaway. Did I yeah. hear that right? I did. They hustled after a rebound. What a uh, change. I think that went off Oregon's knee. Yeah, oh, I think it went off South court. Carolina's knee. Let's review that. So, Oregon has What's got the, the signal. Lead. Here it is right Oregon, here. Oregon has got the lead. Uh, uh, Dana Altman is a coach you respect the heck out of. Yeah, I really do. A uh, guy that was at Creighton before Greg yep. McDermott. Um, and a guy that had the Arkansas job literally for minutes. And now he's at Oregon, and I still stand by it. The year you did stand up in the bracket challenge, they, would, they should have won the national championship going to a Final Four. And – for whatever reason, once they get to the tournament, they're ultra-focused and they play their best basketball. Uh, here's why I hate doing a bracket. Okay. Uh, that's ought to be interesting. Like Duquesne, BYU earlier. Right. Only because I had BYU in the Sweet 16, I was cheering for BYU. Right. If I had nothing on the game, you go Duquesne. Duquesne. I would be cheering for Duquesne no, all, no all day long. Because of the upset, right? I'm sitting here yeah, cheering but I don't against an SEC team. But right. still, because of we all have BYU. That's why I can flip this thing quickly. Yeah, I did. It's I told myself last year, I was like, I don't know if I'll do a bracket again. And I always end up doing it because it's part of what we do and it's part of what America does for this thing. But I, it does take away a little of enjoyment where I can't enjoy massive upsets because I, I feel like it's because it's hurting me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, the same with gambling. Yeah, we do this. Uh, we do a, a snake pool, a snake draft, and there's eight of us. And we get six teams each. And because of those six teams, I'll be pulling against upsets. So I, I feel you. 
Uh, let's talk about another game tonight. 625 TBS, Gonzaga at mybookie.ag, about a six and a half, seven point favorite over McNeese. Now, McNeese's record is 30 and three. For those that have not followed McNeese, their coach is Will Wade, who's the fired LSU coach. Heck of a coach. Uh, was doing a nice job at LSU, was recruiting well, but he was recruiting a little too well for the NCAA. He got caught in the FBI wiretap. A lot of guys survived that. Sean Miller and Will Wade did not survive that. And now he's or at Rick McNeese Patino. State. Or Rick Patino. Uh, I can tell you a guy that did, Bill Self. <laughs> he's stronger than he's ever been. Um, but McNeese is 30-3. and three. They have played an awful schedule. Ken Palm. The basketball analytics side has them like in the 330s in their strength of schedule. There's only 358 college basketball teams. So they're in the bottom, you know, bottom quarter, bottom sixth of of schedule strength. So that 30 and three is a little bit misleading. But when you got a coach like Will Wade, I think a lot of people say, I'll buy into that 30 and three some. Yeah. And look, here's here's the thing. They're playing Gonzaga. And this is that first year that I don't think anybody expects anything out of Gonzaga. We know Mark Few's good. A, really a, a great coach. He's one of the elite coaches right now in college basketball, but he doesn't have the Chet Holmgrens and the Jalen Suggs of the world that they, the Adam Morrison's, the guys that they've had in the past. They just don't have those standout elite players. So I don't really know how good this Gonzaga team is. I think they're better than McNeese State. I do think McNeese State, although they lack a lot of size, you brought this up earlier. They're one marquee win this year. They beat UAB tournament team this year that, yep. that won – of uh, the American by 21 points in the regular season. So I think McNeese is playing loose. That's their best win, yeah. yeah and, I, I mean, McNeese is dangerous. I I, I like Gonzaga in this game, yeah. but we'll see. Unless Dunaway, I am missing a team. We looked at it during the show today. Unless I'm missing a team, UAB is the only tournament team they played. Right. Does Name, that worry you a little bit, though? Oh, it does. It does. Yeah. Name some of the ones they beat. Remember, they were they beat Bible okay. studies. They beat Bible studies, which I know we got all the Sanford fans here that are doing Bible studies, but. That is an actual team, Bible studies. I don't I don't know anything about Bible studies. Jim, they beat Champ Christian. Right. They beat Laterno. I don't know what Laterno is. Sounds very French, and I'm probably saying it wrong. Um, they beat uh, – give me one more. Hang on, hang on. I was going to give you this other one that they beat in December. I have to jump ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, the man, Missi- down to 10. Oh, no, Dunaway. The What's Mississippi School for Women, Dunaway. That's right. Mississippi yeah. University for Women. I think UAB, if I'm not mistaken, is the only tournament team that they played this year. Now, like Lance said, they beat UAB. By 21, I think. Yeah, they beat them very, very, uh, very soundly, in fact, uh, 81-60. At UAB, that game was uh, in Birmingham. So, uh, does that worry you, Jim, that that's the only teams that they have played that are in the – the only team they play in the tournament is UAB? Doesn't worry me. I got the Zags. <laughs> <laughs> does it worry you? Is that one reason you picked the Zags? It right? is one reason I picked yeah. the Zags. I, You know, I was all in on McNeese until I started breaking it down. I was like – not going to buy into Will Wade and McNeese. Uh, great story. He'll get a good job someday again, but uh, not not in this Zags team. They're, this Zags team is beaten up because of the history of what Gonzaga has been able to do, do recently, but this is not a bad basketball team. They got some quality wins. Lazy rebound there. Oregon gets it. Uh, you know, you dog out this South Carolina team. Lamar really Perez did a great job. They won in Knoxville this year. They did. Beat Kentucky. Yeah, it's uh, – I don't know. I think they beat Clemson. I, I do think that we will start to see less and less upsets in this tournament, sadly. Well, let me ask you about Gonzaga, though. We're Lance. watching 11 beat a 6. No, we I know. That's, beat that's six barely an upset. It wasn't Oregon How's favored? How's 11 beating yeah. a 6 an upset? Well, Oregon, was, Oregon favored. was favored the game. It's not an upset at all. They yeah. were. Uh, You're Lance, right. No, Lance. Duquesne was an upset. Lance, yeah. Gonzaga, this is one of the more average Mark Few teams Gonzaga's ever had. Or it's, one of the average Gonzaga teams, Mark Few. No, so I mean, if you want to pull, or I'll do it, Mark Few, and you go year by year. I think he this was is, an eight seed one year. I can remember back back in the day I, when he. Was I being almost think this was his weakest team in the last twenty years, though. Let so, me check. Uh, and he has played for a national championship, but wouldn't you say the Mark Few era has been marked by earlier than expected exits? Would you give me that? Yeah. I mean, that has kind of been the knock on him, right, as they go out of the tournament earlier than you would expect. But he has played for two national championships. I know that. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I know. That is pretty amazing. Would it stun you as much as Gonzaga has struggled to finally win that championship? Where are the Sanford guys going? They're leaving. Well, they're going. I mean, did they just now realize, hey, this game doesn't start for another? Oh, okay. We're just moving tables. Okay. I was worried about the Sanford guys. Wow, you were about to, like, we're a stand-up comic. They were about to walk out. Well, I'm just like, you guys, you're here now. shame them. You're here now. Would it stun you, though, if this is the Gonzaga team that finally makes that run and win the championship? I mean, you'd be yeah, stunned by that, yeah, right? it would stun me. Yeah. 
It would stop. Uh, give me. me his head coaching. I mean, this okay. is a remarkable head coaching record. So Gonzaga. Uh, oh my God. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's Sweet Sixteen after Sweet Sixteen. Okay. Now he's had some exits in the round of thirty. Let's just go the last decade. Okay. Thirty-two and three. Twenty-nine and seven. Uh, give me, give me the turn. Okay. Give me the turn. Yeah. They're, they're, okay. Everyone's so, going to say you can read okay. all that twenty-nine wins. Thirty-two and three. Only one win. One. One and one in the tournament. Twenty-nine and seven. One and one in the tournament. 35 and 3 Elite 8. 28 and 8 Sweet 16. 37 and 2 played for the national championship and lost. 32 and 5 Sweet 16. 33 and 4 Elite 8. Uh, 31 and 2 canceled tournament because of COVID. 31 and 1 played for the national championship. 28 and 4 Sweet 16. 31 and 6 Elite 8 last year. Give me a school that's that eight straight would, years of going to the second weekend at least. Give me a school that wouldn't take that. Oh, everybody. Would. Everybody. Every last everybody one. Would. Would. Everybody. I mean, yeah. you could talk about the powers. Kentucky would take that. That's about what they've had with Cal. Yeah. Uh, was, North Carolina Cal hasn't gone that deep since he won one. North yeah. Carolina would take that. Yeah. Now, now, I know there's some head coaches that would disagree with this. I've always said if you coach a really good program, you should be in the tournament every year. I think getting in the tournament is the equivalent of playing in a bowl game. I heard Mike Krzyzewski on that show. I don't even know what it's called on SiriusXM. Mike Krzyzewski. That I'll just it's randomly get in Coach yeah. K's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but he said it, you know, because somebody was, whoever the host was that night said, you are like third all time with 24 consecutive appearances in the tournament. He said, yeah, it's great. He was like, but I've always said, if you coach a program, a big time program, the the floor should be getting to the NCAA tournament. That's right. It's a, uh, it's the difference between a good year and a bad year is making the NCAA tournament. That's what's so crazy about North Carolina not getting there last year. And then you teams make like it, Villanova out there this right. year. Then you can make it a great year in the tournament, right? Yeah. Good year, better year. Well, give me – all right, so Gonzaga is a five seed. And they're going to play Kansas if Kansas beats Sanford. I mean, they could get Sanford. We'll see. Um, your feel for Gonzaga is a Sweet 16 again? Is that I got, their ceiling? I got there. I got is that their there. ceiling for you? That's, that's as far as I have them going. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wait, then who do they run into? Yeah, uh, second round, they've well, got, they play Kansas. They play Kansas, they play Kansas yeah, if Sanford. they win. Or Sanford. They play winner of Kansas Sanford, then they get Purdue, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, South Dakota State, Iowa State. This is a 15-2 game. Now, again, no one uh, blowouts. if you were part of Merch Madness, you know that if a 15 beats a 2 or a 16 beats a 1, you're going to get your money back for anything you spent uh, between the announcement of the field and Wednesday. So good for you. This is one of those shots, 15-2, but I know you very much like this Iowa State team. I do, just because of the defense. Now, here's the thing. You say blowout, and and I agree. I think it's going to be a blowout tonight. The number's gone up to 15 and a half. But the only way Iowa State blows you out is playing incredible defense. They were undefeated at Hilton Coliseum this year, where that's one of, obviously one of the best home field court advantages in all of college basketball. But they were just kind of average on the road. Neutral site here. The Jackrabbits do have a lot of tournament history. I think they've been to three consecutive tournaments now. So I don't think the lights are going to be too bright. Uh, but I do think Iowa State's defense is way too much. Uh, Dunaway, South Dakota State, 22-12. and 12. Uh, Do they have anything at all for Iowa State? You say blowout. 15 and a half is the number. And it's your free play, right, at Lancelot.com. Yeah. Lancelot.com, seven total plays up. Some of them already going off, but your free play is Iowa State. So you like them by two touchdowns. And Dunaway, do. you like them big. I like them big. big. Uh, another 15-2. This is another opportunity for you to get free clothing from us on TNT. Tennessee, a three-touchdown favorite, 21 and a half at mybookie.ag over St. Peter's. Anybody will remember St. Peter's for making the run after they beat Kentucky a couple of years ago. They got another shot at that. Was that a 15-2? Yeah. When they beat Kentucky, here we are, 15-2 again, against a team and a coach that struggle to perform this time of year. If you're a Tennessee fan, Dunaway, and we talked to Clay Travis, he's on our show every week, as big a Tennessee fan as I know, and he admitted, this is this is a fear for me. You're one game into the postseason, and you've already seen what scares you about Rick Barnes. They get schooled by Mississippi State, who just got run in this tournament. Uh, that That's, that's, you know that's why, worrisome. You know why they got schooled? They, they too, were not engaged. Too much of their offense goes through Dalton Connect now. He is unbelievable. But Ziegler is so good with the basketball. They're good inside. Vescovi used to be Vescovi, excuse me, used to be uh, really a talented scorer. He can score too. He's he's been neutered. He he has he's not even part of the offense anymore. He's in there basically to play defense now. 
Uh, Ziegler sometimes walks it up the floor and waits for Connect to run off three screens just to get him the basketball with 12 seconds on the shot clock. They need to go back to what they were playing earlier in the year. And I think they will. And then let Connect, when Connect yeah. gets it, be fine. But keep Ziegler going to the basket. Keep using the inside game. Play that Rick Barnes defense. I think it's a dangerous team. Yeah, I, I, I think I have them in the Final Four. I agree with you. I've got Tennessee in the Final Four. And, and I do think Rick Barnes will go back to when we saw Tennessee as a team that could win a national championship. And I think they're going to share the basketball more. It's going to be about good ball movement. And I think for Connect, when you need those touches down the stretch and you've got to have a go-to guy, it doesn't need to be the first 20 minutes of the game. You know, it can be the last five minutes of the game, but you don't want your guys getting stale and standing around early in the game. So I do agree there's going to be a different strategy. I think Rick Barnes is a hell of a coach. I just think he's gotten some bad breaks in the tournament. I, I think – this year is going to be a little different for Tennessee. We're live at uh, the Edgewood location of Odie's. It's the brand-new location in Homewood. Tons of uh, fans already in here for the night games, including a lot of Sanford fans who have made the uh, easy drive over from campus uh, to watch their team play Kansas. We're going to get that game in one second. Odie's Edgewood, Lance, great place not only to watch tonight's game. Tomorrow's going to be a special day here, though, uh, in this city when you've got UAB, Auburn, and Alabama playing back-to-back-to-back in the same arena but on all these TVs at both of these locations. Well, if I was a, a business owner and my employees wanted to go watch games in this state, I would just be like, go on a cutout at lunch. We're going to call it a day. Spring break starts for most schools. In fact, uh, let's tomorrow. all go together, right? Yeah. yeah. And and let's team building. A little team building. But, yeah, it's going to be an incredible uh, day tomorrow and great places to watch a game, not only at this Odie's, the original and Crestline, Enjoy the great food from Rodney Davis, award-winning wings, delicious burgers, great sandwiches, including the Diablo sandwich, chili that you had, the uh, the corn dog, ice cold beer buckets full of the Bud Light and Stella. Stop into one of those two great locations. Go see Will Haver and the great staff, Odie Staff. We are the next round, nextroundlive.com, or get the Next Round app. You can also uh, find us on YouTube, Next Round Live. Follow us on all social media at Next Round Live. We appreciate all you guys uh, jumping in and doing that that are here at Odie's. It might be new to our show. Another game tonight, 840 NC State, Texas Tech. NC State was not in the uh, NCAA tournament going to Washington, D.C. They won five games in five days. That was the only way they were getting in. They beat North Carolina in the ACC championship game to make it in. Kevin Keats, I don't know that we've brought this up on the show. I know you guys saw this. Amazing contract. Oh, yeah. Got a two-year contract extension just by winning that game. The accelerator. And I talked yep. to – I brought up the, the guy, Kevin, at Hoover Country Club, the NC State grad, uh, grad that lost his – or lost a good part of his vision. And we were talking about this contract. And he said, I literally cried when we won the tournament. And I never Happy asked him why. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's because you won the tournament you got in or the fact that Kevin Keats gets the extension. But this is Dennis Felton all over again. Absolutely it is. I don't know that they were going to fire him like they were Felton. Felton was they getting were. fired. I mean, according to these guys that are yeah, NC the State fans, getting fired. they were going to fire him. So now he gets the two-year contract extension. You're in the tournament. So now that you've made it and you've extended him, I guess you just you hope they win every game now, right? They're not going to. Dunaway, I just don't believe in teams that have to make these tournament runs to get in. They're an 11 seed playing 6 seed Texas Tech. Uh, I like Texas Tech in this game. I like tonight. Texas Tech a lot because of that reason. I think you – you uh, have all that energy you spend, and you come out of that tournament in D.C., and that stamina drops down instantly. All that energy it drops down, and then you got to get it back. I don't think you can do that. Yeah. Because uh, it's such a quick turnaround Tuesday to Thursday or Wednesday to Friday when you win that play-in game. That's why we see these play-in games. Um, why you see that play-in game winner go deeper in the tournament. SEC or conference championship teams – that are not supposed to be in the tournament who win five games like NC State, uh, you do so much energy, and then you got a huge layoff, and then you got to come back and crank it back again from Thursday. So Saturday to Thursday, and now you got to crank it back up again. Hard to restart that engine again. Yeah, it's flooded, as my grandfather would call it. Yeah, uh, you flooded it. You hit the gas yeah, too much. Flooded it. Uh, Texas Tech, a four and a half point favorite at mybookie.ag. We'll come back to Sanford, Kansas, but let's talk Drake, Washington State. That is the latest game tonight on True TV. Drake, a point and a half favorite. That's the 10 seed, Lance. Favorite at mybookie.ag over Washington State, which caught your eye because you really like this Cougars team. Yeah, well, the uh, I, I do. 13-3 uh, and three, their last 16, including a sweep over Arizona. On the other side, Drake is really, really good. Indiana State, the Sycamores were ranked earlier this year. 
Drake, in, uh, Drake ends up winning the Missouri Valley Tournament. And Tucker DeVries is a guy that can play. We talked about Dalton Connect. I've said this before. Kid 6'7". He can do everything. You'll see him tonight. I think it's going to be a hell of a game. Um, but Washington State, just watching this team, there's something about them. I've got them in the Elite Eight. We'll see how it plays out. Um, Dunaway, you feel good about Drake or Washington State? That's I a got, big, I Turns got, out that's a big game for us if he's got them in the Elite Eight. I've got Drake winning I do this too. game. Oh, you got the Wazoo shirt on? It's a good-looking shirt. I like yeah, that. I do like that T-shirt. I miss my T-shirt days. I'm sitting here thinking – they're coming um, back. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking back to um, my Zach Bryant ticket ticket purchase, which was a spur of the moment here during the show. Well, it's only during the first round of the tournament. Yeah. It is. It did is. Did you get a good deal on the tickets? Why did you buy them so quick? I did get a great deal on the tickets from one of our listeners who bought two extra. You know, you get into those. What do they call the um, queues? And you end up having to buy, and then your friends have bought some as well. Right. So you end up with two extras. So uh, Tr, who listens and watches our show had two extras, so I was able to jump in and uh, grab a ticket from him real quick. And so, um, you know, my wife's got to preach this weekend. She's got final exams next week. It's Holy Week next week. And um, But I'm just uh, – So, so is you're she going or not? I'm, I'm going to say it out loud really quick. Yeah. I'm just nervous that I bought them without asking her first. Oh, so yeah. she is going and she uh, doesn't know. Uh, she's not going, which is maybe the problem. <laughs> So you've got two tickets and your wife's not going. No, she's busy. She's well, got who a, are you taking she, with? She's you? got a right. I got a buddy that likes. Oh, okay. Zach, so you got a, you got somebody to use the. See, other she tickets. doesn't. She doesn't like that kind of music. Okay. So she'd be she'd be miserable. She she'd sit there and watch British television with headphones on, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Who so was the, uh, so the beat up lady that, that won America? Uh, uh, Brit, 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 Susan Scott, Boyle. Yeah. 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 Is that bad, would that be more her? <laughs> she she does cry when she sings. Um, no, she she's too busy, so she can't go. Uh, but I got friends who, who enjoy him who are going to go, and uh, and uh, it'll 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 be a good time. I'll probably try to chase down Woody and Poochie too. All right, late game tonight. But, but my big concern is when I get home. Money you didn't ask about telling Maggie. Yeah. So what should I tell her? What should be my pitch? Um, uh, how about this? I earn the money. <laughs> Zip it. <laughs> Zip it. I wouldn't <laughs> even tell her. <laughs> All right. You know what? If she bitches, put her on the couch tonight. Wow. <laughs> Great advice. Uh, Eight fifty-five tonight. TBS and all oh, the TVs. We are TVs. live over here. Yeah, over here. Yeah, hey, we are very hey, much. Hey, by the way, right. if he had been president back in the forties, we'd have never waited for Truman. <laughs> <laughs> it been, as soon as Oppenheimer walked yep. in, it's like, you think it works? Yep. Let's try it out. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Yeah. Yep. Such a good movie. Uh, Eight fifty-five tonight on TBS, and it'll be on the TVs here from Salt Lake City. The Sanford Bulldogs playing the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, Samford is a seven and a half point underdog. The biggest story in this game is obviously the health of basically Kansas' two best players. We know the status of one of them, but Hunter Dickinson, the other one, is he's still banged up. But let's 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 talk about the player they will not have. Yeah. So Kevin McCullers led led the Jayhawks eighteen point three points per game, and for a minute was leading the Big Twelve in scoring. And when they were whole, this is a team that beat UConn, they beat Kentucky, they beat Houston. But without McCullers, they were just missing that go-to guy. And outside of that, they don't have any depth. They've got six guys that play double-digit minutes. So they've got to find some guys that are going to be able to produce from the bench. And Sanford's the complete opposite. They've got 11 guys that get quality minutes. And they're just going to throw fresh bodies at you nonstop. They're going to press 40 minutes. And if Kansas doesn't have success with Dickinson, and I – I don't know about you guys. If I was Bill Self, I would be honest about Dickinson. I'd be like, he's 80%, but this guy's a warrior. He's going to gut it out. Bill Self is saying Dickinson's 100% ready to go. And well, we, we all know that's not the case because we've been told that it's a shoulder that popped could, out could easily pop out over and over and over again. So he's one big hit away from uh, him being out of the game. And well, I, that's I, I the told you, I would, I would go Karate Kid, and I would, I'd chip it. You'd sweep the well, left. No, Lance I would, I would send a goon in. You'd have a goon, come off the bench, just go hard into the shoulder. Well, and say I, how he I would it, just right? be – Sanford's got so much depth, I would just be as physical as I could with him. Why would you not? Well, yeah. Sanford's only got the one big guy, Chore Chore. So, if you're physical with him and he gets two fouls real quick, you are in a world of hurt inside. You better be making every three you take because you really don't have much more – length to run at Dickinson. Here's another reason I like Sanford, though. Even with Dickinson banged up and McCullers out, that Kansas team is not deep anyway, right? Seven no. player, yep. seven player rotation anyway. With with McCullers. With six, McCullers. Six, six without, without him. Yeah. yeah. So even if Dickinson's in there, you've got an advantage of just playing bucky ball fast, 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 fast. 
and they're going to have to ex extend themselves uh, with minutes and stuff. I think you have an advantage on the fact that they don't have a very deep bench. All right, both of you give me the uh, over-under for you in this game. Uh, we brought this up on the show earlier today. I'll do it again for everyone that is here or missed us earlier today. Sanford top 20 team in the nation in three-pointers made. They average about nine a game. For Sanford to win this game, they need to hit how many threes? 11. 11 will do it. I would say 12. 12? Okay, so yeah. 11 or 12. 81-77 Sanford is my pick. So you're picking Sanford to win this thing? Yeah, this is my bracket. I got Sanford. Okay. Um, I think it is uh, a really, really good game, and I wouldn't be surprised if Sanford leads this game in the second half. I think it will be a really good game until about five minutes, and I think Dickinson's going to have a big game. I think, and I said this earlier on the show, either Sanford wins the game or Kansas ends up winning by double digits. I'm going to say Kansas wins this game by 10. I'm going to say it's like uh, 83 to 73. The other stat I was going to ask you about, one thing Bucky Ball does, you guys watch Bucky McMillan coach at Mountain Brook and at Sanford. He runs a lot of guys at you. You talked about that, about nine or ten guys, Lance, will play in this game for them, right? Yep. And he loves to press. If you if you inbounded in that deep corner, if you watched their conference championship game that punched their ticket, um, the team they were playing, and I don't know why it slips in my mind right now, the team they were playing in their conference North championship Carolina, game. North Carolina, Wilmington? Was it, no, I don't think it was. Asheville? Anyway. Yeah, well, they were playing in Asheville. But I, I, either the team they were playing kept inbounding it in the deep corner. And that's exactly what they're asking you to do. Inbound on that deep corner. We're going to trap. You're going to throw it. We're going to get a turnover to cheap basket. That's East Tennessee ball. State. Sue Sanford. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 thank yeah. you, Jim. East Tennessee State. Yeah, yeah. Buccaneers. Just kept them bounding into that deep corner. Kept them bounding into that deep corner. And Sanford kept trapping them and creating the turnovers. Sanford forces 16 turnovers a game on average. You think they need how many uh, against Kansas? Oh, I think it's all they need. 16 will do it. Dunaway? Um, 16. 16 is a good number. I'll go even higher, though. I'll go 18. 18. So they need 18. So for you, 11 made threes, 18 turnovers, then you think Sanford wins the game. I so do. You think and, I, and I do think they, they win the game. For you, 12 made threes and 16 turnovers, and they're good to go. Yeah. I think it is a dangerous game for Kansas, but I think Kansas has heard this. I mean, how many people are saying that Sanford's going to win this game Kansas is shorthanded. Kansas is going to be ultra focused. I, and I, you got to at least give me Bill Self to me is the best active coach in college basketball. And Sanford's twos are better than, or excuse me, uh, KU's twos are better than Sanford's ones. So, yeah. Yeah. Supposedly they're at least like, like parts. Um, but those guys, when they had to come in late in the year, they've lost four or five when they've been relied on that. That's against big 12 competition. That's very different. Um, but, you know, I think winning breeds weeding, winning, winning breeds winning, and I think losing breeds losing. And those guys have not been in there with a lot of successful time down the stretch, those twos that we're talking about for Kansas. And I think you get a little pucker factor in the NCAA tournament, especially when you're a Kansas. If this game is late in this game where Sanford still has a shot, I, I like Sanford to uh, – to be, the, to be the darling of this tournament, right? Nobody is shocked by Oregon 11 beating South Carolina. This game's about to go final. Right? Uh, Doug says, how about those lazy Gamecocks, Jimmy D? Yep. He uh, asked you that on Facebook. I don't know why I was so emotional into this game more I really than don't any either. other game in the first round. Yep. Well, I think because you called them out as lazy. If they, yep. would, if they, if you flip this score. Yeah, I, I would mean, eat a lot of crow tomorrow. Yeah, probably. Yeah, don't have to, though. I'm right again. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. run to the bathroom again. You want a cold ah, beer or something? No, I'm good. I'm drinking my uh, my tequila Brown, over here. You've never experienced this when you break the seal. There used to be a place called Club South, and it was Penny Beer, right? And they would they would go Penny Beer until somebody broke the seal. But once somebody broke the seal, then the Penny Beer was off, and it was back to regular pricing, right? So everybody was in one room together, and the dude that finally broke the seal would get booed so bad. Right. But once you break the seal, it you can't come back from it, can you? Yeah. No, I would. Uh, I would have in that situation. I would have peed my pants. I would. I would have. I would have fought to the end. Just the fear of being that guy that gets off. Uh, I would not have done it. I would not have done it. <laughs> so you're breaking the seal. I'm, I'm I've already broken the yeah. seal. That's the problem. Seal. That's what I'm telling you. So, <laughs> so, so I'll be back. A, a second time out for land. You want yeah. a beer? I'm good. I'm drinking my tequila. I am fantastic. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. by the way, this is only my second beer of the day. Uh, right. We had uh, Sterling for Champions came up, and he had a couple of beers up there. And I was like, I really want to drink with you, but I know it's going to be a long night. So I'm going to try to be a little reserved. So I've been good, but I, I drink water all day, as you guys know. Second beer is just 
Yeah. Well, I was explaining to somebody yesterday that right after the show, for that first hour, 12 to 1 every stop, day. Stop, I have to go to the bathroom three or four times it's like, it's in like somebody turns the faucet off. Because I've held it during the show, and then yeah. it's 12 to 1. It's just constant. I have I, to go. I'll tell you, that was the best thing about Dry February, was only getting up once in the middle of the night. Yep. Again, we look terrible with our makeup because we're old. <laughs> now <laughs> the problem is, <laughs> is the bladder. You should see us in the mornings. Uh, our friends at um, UCA for all your... Your logical needs. Uh, we're gonna talk about um, we're gonna talk about a couple things here, Dunaway, as we discuss um, the games for tomorrow, which obviously includes UAB, Alabama, and. Well, give Auburn. me a quick scoreboard there update are, for those uh, who are watching with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do something real quick okay. uh, before I do that. Um, there are uh, reports that Davin Cosby and Nick and Nate Oates has talked about this has broken his foot. Nate Oates says Davin Cosby. Has a broken foot, I had and heard at the shoot around, he is wearing a walking boot. Mm. So Alabama will be out without a guy that, at times, has come off the bench and been a huge spark for them. Yeah, there was a I forget which game it was. I think it was at the SEC tournament that people were like, "Why are we not seeing Davin Cosby?" And I w- had been told that maybe he had suffered a, a an injury in his foot there. Yeah. So he, that has been confirmed. Well, in fact, he has. Nate Oates has confirmed it. It's not just reports. Nate Oates has yeah. said it on the podium, and Davin Cosby is at the shoot-around wearing a, a walking boot. So Alabama will be without Davin Cosby yeah. uh, at the uh, – for I would imagine the entire NCAA tournament, however long Alabama plays. Yeah. Broken foot. So, um, so that makes you know, just another body, different positions. Pringle more important because well, then you may need Grant to go out out on the edge some. Yeah, and James asks, uh, he says, hey, it's being reported Pringle dealing with a personal issue with the team will play tomorrow. Uh, he has missed what we uh, have been following today. Our own Taylor Korn on her way to Spokane today was actually on the flight. Tweeted out photos of Nick Pringle on her commercial flight with him. Um, so she has him in Spokane, obviously. She was with him and he landed in Spokane. Does not mean he is going to play. Yeah, but he is there he is now, there. but yes. he did not travel with the team. He did not. Not going to – I mean, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to play or not. Yeah, travel – Would you be surprised if he plays or not surprised? Um, no, no. I think it would be a team vote, and the great Bobby Bowden said it. Why do you – and I think Nick Saban believed this. I think Gene Stallings believed this. But Bobby Bowden said it flat out. Why am I going to put it, punish 84 people because of one pe- one person's mistakes? Right. right? Why one person breaks the rule, why am I going to punish everybody? Yeah. So I can punish him separately to try to change his actions, but at the same time let him play to sort of help the team. If what we have uh, been told is true, though, part of him playing tomorrow is not just flying on his own commercially to Spokane. It's going to be facing the team and saying, hey, I let you guys down. Sorry about that. I'm ready to go now. If you guys will have me back. If you guys will have me back. So And then I, Mark Sears goes. <laughs> Mark Sears and Latrell Reitzel and, and Ryland Green yeah, and all but those but guys. But you need, you need him. You need him on the team. I mean, if he's going to have a good attitude and play, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I will tell you, I've done the sidelines. Is, is it two times I've done for the Crimson uh, Tide Sports I, Network? I, I, can't keep I did the Arkansas game. game and then one turn, they lost the first game at the SEC tournament. So right. two games is what I did. Last regular season game in the first SEC tournament. Dick Pringle surprised me at how positive he yeah. is during huddles with other teammates and even taking some really heavy coaching. So despite all this stuff you may hear about Nick Pringle during the games, it, it's the only thing I can talk about because it's what I saw with my own eyes. Right. I thought he was a great encourager of Sam Walters and others, and I, I thought he handled some serious and hard coaching during those two games. And I think he's a contributor. I like when Nick Pringle is on the floor and he's playing well. And if he could get back to playing as well as he did at certain points last year, then Alabama can make a little bit of run here. Now, I think he played better when Betty Ako was on the team and he he only had to do a certain role. Um, and we're asking, if you're an Alabama person, you're asking him to do something a little bit different. But it is a um, – I think, I think he's a must-have. Yeah. I think you need Nick Pringle. I think you need all the bodies you can get to make it happen um from the media availability for alabama uh nato says he was dealing with quote a personal issue will be available to play uh should be good to go tomorrow the way nato puts it does not promise any playing time or starting um pringle says i'm 
This is from uh, Nick Kelly, Tuscaloosa News, documenting what he said in the uh, player availability. Uh, just finding a good mindset to come out here and play for my team and do whatever it takes to win. So, we'll so see. they did make Nick Pringle available. Well, I think media? it's an open locker room. Yeah, yeah I think, well, you know, on a, uh, now you, you could be you, in the bathroom or yeah, wherever well, you are. They, they did. KD Johnson uh, at the SEC tournament would spend the entire time back in the shower area and would uh, not come out. Because uh, he did not want to talk to the media? Yeah, he did not want to talk to me. He came out after winning the championship for the final 15 minutes of the media window. Yeah. Other than that, he stayed in the back and did not want to uh, – did not want to do interviews. So there's ways around around the rule of having everyone available. Especially, you could have just hit Nick Pringle. He, he's not here it's yet. It's kind of hard to hide. He's not here so yet. He's a big guy. Uh, he's, uh, he's, you, may have, you may have read on Twitter, he's on a flight. Yeah, he's for, waiting for his bag <laughs> yeah. at the Spokane International Airport. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk about tomorrow. UAB taking on San Diego State, TNT, 1245. Uh, UAB San Diego State playing tomorrow. Your feel? Uh about UAB and San Diego State. Lance, let's go. UAB <laughs> San Diego State. Lance out fraternizing with the crowd. We're doing a show here. <laughs> back from the commercial break. <laughs> I mean, we're back from the break. Yeah. So ask the question again. La, San Diego State UAB. You're feeling about San Diego State UAB. Um, it's been a great, you know, to get a championship trophy for UAB, for him to, uh, for Andy Kennedy to sort of stick a flag in the ground in the American the first year to let everybody in that conference know that UAB is a basketball school and they can play some hoops. I think that's a great thing. I think it's a tough matchup for UAB because uh, San Diego State's uh, calling card is defense. Their inside um, game is really good. Uh, We saw this team, some of the same parts, eliminate Alabama as a number one overall seed last year. Um, I think it's a tough matchup for um, for UAB. We know Yaks will get a double-double. For this, it'll be it'll have to be Butter, uh, Butter and uh, and uh, Eric Gaines having a big game. This number, I think, Lance moving just a little bit. I got San Diego State right here, my bookie dot six and a half point favorite. I think it's been seven seven and a half. Yeah, this is gonna be a really tough matchup for UAB. Played really well in the American tournament, obviously getting the automatic bid here. And Jaden Ladee is an All American for San Diego State and Brian Dutcher. And this is a guy that, if you go back to the national championship matchup last year where they lost to UConn, I think he played single-digit minutes in the championship game. He was a contributor. Now he is their go-to guy. So there wasn't a lot of expectation for the Aztecs this year. They've overachieved. uh, But there's a reason they're favored. I think they're the better team. Their defense is lights out. And I think UAB is going to have a a lot of problems scoring the basketball. Either one of you guys have UAB moving forward? I, I do, do not. not. Unfortunately, yeah. I got San Diego State beating them. I do too, but I would I, say this. But I'll be pulling for UAB. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd well. love to see a UAB-Auburn game to go oh, to the Sweet 16. Yeah. There is a chance that San Diego State may have been overrepresentative in the seeding because of what they did last year. But as you know, as you know, you ended up um, um, having uh, some people hit the portal. Some people went to the NBA, and as you said, you got a role player now who's sort of the biggest minutes for the Aztec. So unlike Florida Atlantic, you have a lot of these guys that uh, that um, didn't you know didn't come back for San Diego State like they did at Florida Atlantic. Well, you've got another double-digit Mountain West seed that's about to win. Uh, Nevada's about to knock off Dayton. And, and you guys had Dayton winning that one? I had Dayton I did. winning that one. I had Dayton go to Sweet 16. So you guys are in good shape right now with me because I've, I've got two Sweet 16s about to go down right here. But my point was going to be Mountain West was probably undervalued, but San Diego State is probably overvalued a five based on their history right. and the fact that they played for a national championship last year. I agree with that. Won't spend a ton of time on these. It's a 15-2 and a 16-1, but Western Kentucky, Marquette, Stets, and UConn. You think Marquette or UConn, the two Big East teams here, have any trouble? Uh, no trouble at all. Yeah, I would say no trouble. I'm one of those, I don't know about you guys, when I fill out the brackets, I go ones and twos. I know we had merch. I, put them, I know I put them forward. But there is no way I'm taking a 15 or a 16 in the bracket. No, I put ones all the way out to the sweet 16. Yeah, it's yeah. immediately? Yeah. yeah. Pretty then, much, yeah. 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 And then I put twos out one round, and then I look at the matchup at that point. All right. Tomorrow on True TV at 210, a weirdly sexy pick for a lot of people. I don't know where this is coming from. I wonder if it's because of Patino is coaching them. But 11 seed New Mexico is taking on 6 seed Clemson. New Mexico actually favored in this game. Don't let the seeding fool you here. New Mexico a two and a half point favorite 
at mybookie.ag indicative of how the public feels about this New Mexico team, strangely? Well, look, New Mexico are great running Las Vegas, winning the Mountain West, and they really had to do that. If they didn't win Saturday to get to the championship game, all the experts said the bracketologists said they would have been out. They win that game. And, Brown, you brought this up. There's something with the metrics with New Mexico. I'm not there one of those be. guys. What's I'm still an old-school eye test kind right. of guy when it comes to basketball. I really don't break down the metrics. They're there for a reason, and New Mexico is obviously pretty high on these metrics. The reason I mentioned that, the reason I brought up what the metrics are, is done away the fact that we've seen a lot of ESPN people have New Mexico going deep. And I, I said there's got to be some sort of metric that the ESPN production people have shared with their staff where they're like, ooh, I like this New Mexico yeah. team. You've had Reese Davis do it. Who else? You Andrea have? Carter had it in the final four. Somebody you mentioned today. Tom Hart had him in the Tom final Hart, four. Tom Hart, yeah, all ESPN employees. Yeah, I don't know I, what they're getting on. I think Marty Smith might have had him in the final four. Uh, I don't no. know. No, Marty had uh, – it was chalky. It was like Tennessee, Kentucky, Purdue, and North Carolina, I, I think. There were three of the 73 yeah. that had him in the final four, yeah, It's just a weird That's team three, that everybody's jumped on. Uh, Marty had Auburn in. Yeah, weird, but a weird team, but yeah. this New Mexico team. You're not buying in. Uh, I am not. I think they win this first game, though. I don't know if I have them winning the second game or not. Who do they get in the second round if they if they win that game? So know? this would be an 11. Uh, who would they play in wow, the second Wow, another round? 11 that's supposed to win. How about that? Yeah. Already 2-0 today. Well, that's what somebody said earlier. Everybody's focusing on the 12-5s, the 11-6s, or the upsets right now. Yeah. Uh, Yale and Auburn. Let's talk some about Auburn. Boy, I, I'm surprised on this one, Brown. Yeah. How many people... Oh, which one are you talking about? Are Yale, Auburn. Okay. That are picking Yale to win this game outright. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Well, I saw that Bruce Pearl said that, or and Steven said it on our show, and then I think Bruce said it. I just wondered if that was coaches trying to motivate their team. No, Seth Davis said it on the selection show. Did he? Yeah. So he had Sanford yeah. and Yale. This, this, is, this, is where I, this is where I light myself on fire. I think Yale beats Auburn. All right, so it's TNT tomorrow, 315. As I mentioned, you got UAB, Auburn, and Alabama back to back to back. Yale, Auburn, Lance, when the, when the seating came out, your immediate reaction was, I have watched this Yale team. That is a great draw for Auburn. Yeah, I thought it was a great draw. And and maybe I was a little bitter watching Yale and laying the seven and a half against Brown. <laughs> and they, they hit a last second shot to win the game and ultimately get to this spot. But, you know, when we had Steven on, I mentioned they've got a kid in Danny Wolf that's seven feet that loves to shoot threes. And he's a big seven feet. He's 255 pounds. And you heard. Stephen Pearl was like, this is a white dude that puts it through his legs, yeah. bringing the ball you, you up. You don't see that much. No, and you've got five guys. Yale is the best defensive team in the Ivy League. Their metrics show they're one of the better teams defensively in college basketball. They've been to three of the last five NCAA tournaments, and their entire starting five averages double digits. The problem is they don't have a lot of depth. And Auburn, one of the deepest teams in college basketball. Auburn is way too good. This could be a scare for a little bit if Auburn's a little tight and they're missing their shots. But I think Auburn way too balanced here. Dunaway, aside from Janai Broom, you've seen this Auburn team a lot in person. Aside from Janai Broom, the Auburn player that has to have the best tournament for them to do what you think they'll do, which is win the national championship, that Auburn player is who? Well, I'll give you two of them. One is Chad baker Mazzara because okay. I think he has become both the defensive and offensive spark plug. He is sort of a guy that some fan bases will call dirty right, that he does the little bumping and the talking and maybe trying not to look rough. I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not touching him, but as I raise my elbow, I graze you with my right. – raise my arms, I graze you with my elbow. But it gets under the other guy's skin so badly it takes them out of their comfort zone. So I think he's got to be Chad Baker, Baker Mazzaro. He's got to keep doing that. I, I think he's got to be really good. And then I think Jalen Williams has to be really good to complement Janai Broom. Janai's got to be Janai. He's got to be the best yeah. guy on the floor, and he usually is. But I do think that Jalen's got to have a good offensive uh, time. When they were the Splash Brothers and they annihilated South Carolina, remember that game? I do. Where they hit, I think, 9 of 11 between the three of them, uh, between the two of them for three. I think he's have got to have a good game as well. And, um, you know, KG, KD Johnson just can't be that guy that goes out there and hurts you. He's uh, just got to play yeah. within himself. Let, let me give you a couple lands from the listeners before you give yeah, me yours. I, I was going to give you two. Okay, but. Markel says Trey Donaldson. Troy says Denver Jones needs to stay hot with either one of those on your list. Yeah, I, I had, Ch had Chad baker Mazzara. I think you've yeah. got to get one of these long guards who's got to have an incredible tournament, either baker Mazzara, Denver Jones, or both. I think with – with Williams or Broom, you're going to get the production down low. But one of these guards is really going to step up. And, and see, the thing I like about this Auburn team, other than their personalities, because I think, I and, I and I talked to this about Stephen up in Nashville, 
and to a couple of players about it. I think Taylor has sent these interviews out. If not, we may send them out as the tournament goes on. But I just talked to him a couple of times in the locker room about how their personalities, they joke around with each other a lot, like them starting a campfire on my bald head you right, know, in the middle, right. middle of the, the media opportunity. I, I don't think the pressure the, the pressure is going to get to them because they're so, you know, some people would say cocky. I call it confidence. No, they got swagger. a lot of confidence. I don't think there's any and, doubt about that. And I that. think that's important to, yeah. win, to win a championship. And and I just think that anytime they substitute, right, a lot of teams, when, like for Kansas, when they bring another guy in, he's not as good as the guy they're taking out. Auburn, I really believe that the person they bring in and substitute is an equal part almost exactly the same game as the guy that goes out. When you take Aiden out, you bring in Trey, they're the same. They play different styles, but what you get from them is the same. Yeah, production-wise. O- other, than, other than Janai and Dylan, you still get great Dylan defense like you get from Janai. You just don't get the same offense. This, but other than that, everybody else is interchangeable. It feels like, like if I didn't show people his NCAA tournament record at Auburn, it feels like Bruce Pearl has done better than this. He's got the Final Four. Everybody knows about They probably should have won the national championship. I, I think if they don't get, you know, a, a crap call against them against Virginia, they're probably the national champion. Other than that, he's never made it past the round of 32, which I think would surprise that, a lot of that's people. That's shocking for how good of a coach he is. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's only at Auburn. Obviously, at Tennessee, he did prior to that. And at Milwaukee, for that matter. Made the Sweet 16 at Milwaukee. Uh, but, yeah, that is uh, that is a little bit surprising. All right, a lot of people are talking in the chat room. Dayton has fought back to make this a game. They're only down six uh, just before the under four media timeout, 56-50. Nevada leads Dayton, so Anthony Grant and Dayton fight back here. Can't Typ- kill Anthony Grant. T- typical typical Dunaway landmine there. Yeah. Uh, you were, mentally, he was putting that one in the win column. Yeah, Nevada, though, really good team. I still think Nevada's going to win this game. Steve Alford, though, the Wolfpack's head coach, and we remember what a great player he was at Indiana and then, opportunities uh he's coached a lot of different places including new mexico but he has got and ucla he's got the exact same hairdo he had as a player yeah, he's, he's like kirby that. smart kirby smart and steve alford yeah. have never changed their hair yep yep never changed can, can y'all believe i just saw the graphic on cbs or tbs or tnt whichever one's on over there uh of the brackets now this isn't through espn this is through the cbs uh brackets that they have only 5.6 percent of the brackets remain perfect Already? Already. Holy crap. Oh, I believe that. Because we're not even in the night slate yet. So Duquesne, I mean, what, 5% might have had them. Uh, who else big upset? Well, Oregon was at 11 over 6. That's yeah, going to take out the general So you pop. got two 11s. Yeah. So two yeah. 11s have wiped people out. Um, all right. We are live, by the way, at Odie's Edgewood. Great place to watch Sanford, Kansas tonight. How and how many all 12? the state of Alabama teams tomorrow, Odie's Edgewood. Uh, they've also got a location, Crestline Village in Mountain Brook. Odie's a great place to watch the game. We appreciate them having us out. Big cup cocktails, great cold beer, great menu with the Diablo, the burger, the south of the border roll-up, all those great things. How many 12-5s have played today so far? Because I do think when people fill out their brackets, because if you've done this for 10 yeah. years, a lot of people go and pick two 12s over yeah. fives. And as you say, they're not hitting anymore. So you're instantly kicking yourself out of the perfect You've bracket. only got one 12-5 today. That's McNeese and Gonzaga. Yeah, so it hasn't gone yeah. yet. So your other 12 fives are UAB San Diego State tomorrow, uh, which we've talked about. Wow. Um, you've also got a 12 5 in James Madison, Wisconsin, and then the St. Mary's Grand Canyon game, uh, the late game tomorrow night. So we'll get to those in a moment. Dayton just hit a three. It's 56 53. I do want to ask you about Colorado, Florida, another SEC team. Florida, one of the hotter teams in really the country at the end of the year, ended up playing for the conference championship at the tournament. They're a seven seed. Colorado's a 10 seed. MyBookie.ag has Florida about a point and a half favorite in this one. Yeah, I'm a little surprised Florida's not a little more. Colorado's become a trendy pick. They shouldn't have won last night. Boise had a four-point lead with five minutes to go. They had a chippy, uh, as Dunaway said, a bunny. They missed that. I think if they hit that, they probably win. Boise State completely falls apart. They go to 0 and 11 in the NCAA tournament now. Um, I think Florida's a better team. I like Florida in this. Colorado's got three future pros. And Tad Bull's a really good coach, but I like Florida. Uh, I like Florida to win this game, too, and I like them going out to the Sweet 16. Um, but you heard Brian Passink, Alabama analyst, on our show earlier today. Uh, they think the, uh, uh, the the player that got hurt, what's his last name? Uh, uh, Micah. Yeah, the, Micah. Yeah, the Micah, the 7-1. Yeah. yeah. He thinks that's a big loss like I do. I know the, the points and rebounds. Don't show it's a huge loss, but he, he plays a lot of minutes, and he's a big defender for them, big rebounder. I think that's ultimately the difference between them 
making an Elite Eight Final Four run and uh, maybe getting bounced before that. But I still think they're a good enough team. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, March Madness here, 56-56 yep. now. Yeah. Well, what a comeback by Dayton. Yeah, but I, I think Florida is a good basketball team. I wish they were whole. I wish um, the, the kid had not gotten hurt. I'd like to see this Florida team, the way they were playing at the end, as a whole a group there and what that would have been. But, you know, I brought up Chuma Akiki, and when he went down for the Auburn Tigers, that was when it was devastation. There was no way without their best player they were going to make a run. And sometimes it galvanizes teams. They come together. Nobody is giving Florida any any chance in making a little run in this tournament. I still think they have a ton of talent, and they're well coached. Yep. With Todd Gold. That's a very popular pick, Florida was. Yeah, remember when coming into this. Remember when um um back 58 58 and a foul, chance for Dayton to take the lead. Um remember that kid went down three minutes into the game. And in the second half, the with all the devastation of of losing him and not being prepared to not have him, and your leading guard uh having zero Field goals in Walter, the first Walter half. Clayton, Walter Clayton. Yeah. Walter Clayton, zero field goals in the first half. They still in the second half got it back to 57-56 with yeah. one at one point against a dang good Auburn team. Yeah. So even with the parts they have left, they they did some good things against Auburn before they got blown out. Uh, Mr. B says Florida won't get past Marquette. I will say this, Shaka Smart, outside of that one run he made at VCU, does not exactly have an amazing NCAA tournament record. Oh, I think Todd Golden will outcoach him. Again, it's going to come down to the health of Tyler Kolick. Tyler Kolick is a special player that we haven't seen in weeks. You backed away off Marquette a couple weeks ago. You thought they might be the national champion. I thought they'd make a run, but when the brackets come out, you see matchups. And right. That's why I like that Florida. It came down to two teams I liked a lot at the end, Marquette and Florida. And I just like Florida and Todd Golden. Um, you know me. Once you meet somebody, oh, I know. Yeah. You met Todd Golden. He's in yeah. love now. I met Todd Golden and yep. Stephen Pearl and well, Todd I can Golden. tell you didn't meet Lamont Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I did not meet Lamont Paris. Or he wait. asked you. He, he oh, threw, you threw his lazy. keys to you yeah. and said, "Hey, park it somewhere good." <laughs> you talking about a lazy Lamont? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, he was taking a nap on your yeah. chair, your media chair. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're right. You're right. Landmine uh, Believer says Anthony Grant playing an entertaining game. WTF. Yeah, Alabama yeah. fans do not remember that era of basketball. Uh, no. Oh, no. I, re I remember, uh, what are we, two minutes ago, and it's 59-58. I do remember this era, 100%. <laughs> hey, you know what I heard yeah. when I turned on my four box today, YouTube? I right. heard the country bro. Oh, and I know. It, it, uh, uh, Avery Johnson. Avery yeah. Johnson, yep. He's got the ball. <laughs> yeah. He's got to put it on the dash. He's got the ball. Um, another SEC game tomorrow night. Start the night slate on TNT. The Trev Alberts Bowl, new Texas A&M Athletic Director Trev Alberts, playing his old team, Nebraska. Trev won't have anything oh, to do with this game. Uh, Nebraska, a point-and-a-half favorite over this one. Texas A&M, Buzz Williams looked pretty good in that SEC tournament. How do you feel against Nebraska? I mean, they have great guard play, uh, and, and it's led by Wade Taylor the fourth. and when he's on, watch out. Uh, I don't know. You know, Fred Hoiberg is such a good coach. Um, I, and I, I like Buzz. I think it's going to be a great game. I think it's a great matchup. That is a good coaching matchup. Yeah, I think. yeah. evenly matched. Um, I've got Nebraska winning this game, but I don't feel good about it. My question about Buzz is why, why, why they, are they always on the bubble? Yeah, why they yeah. don't get? Why are they always making a run at the end of February, into into March, just to do what they're doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why can't they be this way all the way through the season? They're too herky jerky at times. Uh, Vermont Duke, any trouble for the Dukies in this one? I don't you know. know. So, guys, no, all right. No. Dunaway's wife and his money go to Duke. You're taking the Blue Devils. That's right. right? Grambling Purdue, uh, Purdue a 25 and a half point favorite. TBS one seed Purdue lost to a 16 last year. Not going to repeat itself. History. I don't, I don't think, think so either. either. No, no. I, I don't mean, think so either. literally, I like Matt Painter, nice guy. Uh, but if they were to lose this game, you got to go. Whoa, him whoa, whoa! How bad would this kill him if this was the regular show? No, we were you see what's going on there? What's going on, Dunaway? Oh, Somebody's about oh, to switch the channel. Uh -oh. Is that what it was? Dunaway? This is the regular show. When I'm driving the show, y'all do this stuff all the time. I know. Time. That's what I'm saying. Y'all yeah, do this all the time. I know. That's uh, what I'm saying. You hate it. You just no, remember. I've done a couple of these intentionally. When you want to talk about something else, I've intentionally brought up something else. Okay. Just to, you remember this, Just so right? when we're in there tomorrow, you'll be like, yeah. oh, you know, I need to stop it's, doing it's, this to you. Yeah, okay. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Char Charleston, Alabama. Alabama, a nine and a half point favorite against the spread. Alabama nine and a half. I, I, mean, AG. I, I, you know, I don't trust this team where they are right now to beat anybody. I, I think Alabama wins. I'm going to the Sweet 16. Yeah, but, well, but but when I come out of the Zach Bryan concert or when I go into the Zach Bryan concert, whenever that plays out, I'm not going to be shocked if Alabama loses the game, but I expect them to be in the Sweet 16. 
was it Reese Davis on our show yesterday, or was it somebody that else? It was Reese the other right, day yeah. when you said they move. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Yeah. I just Smells like an upset. He said. I mean, Charleston's a team that can score points. They average over 80 points per game. They haven't lost a game in which they've scored 80, and everybody scores 80 on Alabama. I, I really don't see a way they don't score 80. Uh, I agree with yeah. the way Alabama plays. Defense. I still think Alabama wins the game, though. Yeah. I, I think Alabama's got a great draw. I think they beat, uh, you know, whether it's it's St. Mary's or um, Grand Canyon. I think they're going to beat that winner. I think Alabama's going to play into the second weekend. But And then, as I you said why. earlier today on the show, at that point, this team has way overachieved what they should have I, I done. I don't know if I go way overachieved, but I think – I don't think you can be disappointed if you're not. Yeah, I think if you make the Sweet 16, Nato's has squeezed a lot out of that. Yeah, you're going to be every- disappointed, yes. Yeah. Because think, yeah. you always are when you lose the next game. Yeah. But um, when you look back, you'll be like, hey, man, we were in the Sweet 16, 16 again. Yeah, 16 seed, Longwood, one seed, Houston. You guys don't see any trouble there. No, 20, not at Houston, all. 24 and a half. Here's an interesting game. James Madison in Wisconsin. I know you like this Wisconsin team, Lance. CBS tomorrow night, 840. Wisconsin, a five-and-a-half point favorite I got over James, James Madison. I got James Madison. Oh, so you've got the upset. This is one yeah. of your 12-5 upsets. I think Greg Gard's a better-than-advertised coach. You look out there and you see – Four white guys and Chucky Hepburn. Yeah. Uh, but Chucky Hepburn and A.J. Store, these are really good players. And just watching them and how they play as a team. And they had every call go against him on Saturday against Purdue in the semifinals of the Big Ten. They go to overtime. They end up winning the game. I think they're a really good team, and I think they're playing great basketball. Illinois took the game over in the final two minutes and kind of got away from them. But I think Wisconsin's better than advertised. If they are to win this game, which I think they will, I think they match up great with Duke, and I think they ultimately beat Duke. Yeah, Duke Wisconsin be a fascinating game. All right, so we're coming to the end here. Yeah, just to let everybody know. Yeah, so yeah, that the uh, update is here. Yeah, no, I was going to let you update them well, because I, I got to light my. Well, it's sixty-one it's sixty Dayton. Yeah. Dayton's at the free throw line shooting two. Uh, they hit the first first end of it. So sixty-two sixty fifteen point five to go. Possession arrow is to the Flyers, <laughs> and uh, it looks like Nevada's got no timeouts left. So this is going to be an inbound, and you wonder what, if, if they do hit the back end of this, will Anthony Grant pull a little time and foul? Probably not. The second free throw is up and good. Oh, I think he will. Uh, it's a heck of a comeback by Dayton. Yeah, no, they've, Nevada will. too much time to foul. Nevada will uh, look yeah. back at this and say to themselves, they have uh, – they have let one get away here. What? How much are they up? I can't tell up? Dayton if, if they've got sixteen fouls. If they do, I don't. I don't think they're going to foul. But I maybe think there's do. too much time on they're the clock. They're up three. To be doing up three right with uh, fifteen point five to go. Yeah. There is a timeout, uh, so we're going to take it to break here. We'll give you more <laughs> update. Again, uh, this is a West Region game. This is actually in Alabama's region. The seven ten game. Oh, so there is a chance Dayton and Alabama could play each other. Oh, that'd be interesting, would? Yeah, I think it would be in the uh, Elite Eight. Can't yeah. go to the Final Four. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think if you're an Alabama fan, you sign right up for that, don't you? Yeah, Day- uh, Dayton is at six fouls right now. So yeah. if they do foul, it'll put Nevada to the uh, line for a one and one. I don't know, man. Maybe I get them to the timeline and foul quickly. Yeah. Well, it, the one thing you I don't do, know. if you're Nevada with 15, you can go all the way to the rim, get a quick two with like yeah, nine seconds. Yeah. yeah. If you're uh, if the winner of this game, Lance, gets Arizona, would either of these teams have much for Arizona, you think? That's a two seed in the West. I mean, uh, uh, seven times out of ten, no, but yeah, it's the, again, it, Arizona, as you said, the premature yeah. exits, yeah, they, and they could put up a stinker. Arizona can't, uh, long possession by Nevada, horrible three, yeah, can't get it to go. Oh, they got another look, though, wouldn't have counted. Dayton yeah. wins it, Dayton wins it. So, Anthony hey. Grant and Dayton come from behind, and we got and a cover on. there. We All got right. a cover. Got one and one now at Lance's Lock. Lance's Lock gets a cover, sneaks one out there in the NCAA tournament. Another loss for me on my bracket. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have him going any further, but still, those one points can come back to haunt you. Oh, absolutely they can. So, coming up in the second round, you're going to have Dayton, seven seed in the West region, taking on Arizona. So, uh, we'll see if that West region gets a little bit saucy, but the Flyers advance in. That has been the best game of the day. I mean, if you look really at what we've had today, guys, we've had a 69-51 Michigan State win, 71-67 Duquesne win. That was a pretty good game, Duquesne and BYU. A 17-point win by Creighton, a 20-point win by Arizona, a bloodbath 90-62 win by North Carolina, a big win 85-69 over Moorhead. Oregon, South Carolina was a 14-point game. It played about that way the whole way. Dayton, this game and the BYU-Duquesne game, really the only good games we've had all day. 
Yeah, yes. and, and I just hope we get some good games tonight. I hope we get good games tonight. Um, I do have some kind of big favorites, so I'm kind of torn. I'm like Dunaway. I go back to this like it's it's like money ruins everything, right? That's right. <laughs> I mean, it really does. Like I can't even enjoy good upsets because I got money on the other side sometimes. Uh, we've got two more games we have not talked about in the tomorrow night slate, and then we'll put a wrap on this thing from Odie's Edgewood, the new Homewood uh, location. Odie's Edgewood, I will say, uh, I'm going to communicate real quick. Emily Grace McWhorter is about to go live. We're going to wrap here in a moment. She's going to go live um, with Kalen DeBoer on our same YouTube channel here, so you'll see his post-practice. If you've got your alert set, you'll see that pop up. Yep, she's about to go live, so we're going to wrap real quick. Uh, TCU, Utah State, just a quick thought on that game. TCU, four and a half point favorite. Uh, I lean the Aggies. I don't feel great about it. Again, TCU coming out of the best conference in basketball. Mountain West uh, was looking pretty good until Nevada just shit the bed. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. All right, there you go. Uh, <laughs> true, true, Hello, kid. true statement. Yep. Uh, and then Grand Canyon St. Mary's. If you're an Alabama fan, if you're an Alabama fan, we talked about this with Auburn, with UAB, and San Diego State. Let's talk about it with Alabama. You pull in for the – Obviously, you would normally say 12C, but I do think the Grand Canyon style of play, whether it's 12C, 5C, no matter what, is a better style of play for Alabama to face. They uh, play more like Alabama. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. St. Saint, Saint Mary's is Tennessee light. One of the best defenses in the country. Yeah, and I think St. Mary's and Randy Bennett's one of these coaches, man. The Gales will get after you. They are um, – I don't know. They probably feel a little more at home in Spokane, right? That's yeah, right. They probably right. know places to eat, yeah. places to sleep, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, they don't so win a lot there, though. They don't, they but they're, don't. they're not playing on Gonzaga's campus. They're at the Memorial Coliseum. But there's familiarity with that territory and that time zone and all kinds of th- I mean, just small, yeah, just, little bitty facts. Just the, the, the fact that they probably stay in the same hotel that they yeah. stayed at on the on their road trips. They're, yeah. they're sitting there uh, eating at the same restaurants they do on their road trips. They're in their same time zone. They probably you know, they they've got a, a quarterly port girlfriend, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know they play games at Portland yep. and other places up in that region uh, in their conference, so that helps them tremendously. I think. St. Mary's a five and a half point favorite. MyBookie.ag. All right, but a fun time here at Odie's. Tell everybody about both Odie's locations. Great place to watch tonight's Sanford Kansas game, and then all the action with UAB, Bama, and Auburn tomorrow. Yeah, if you're watching us right now or listening, you know how special this this uh, this time of year is. And there is nothing like the first couple of rounds of basketball. It is and, not. and tomorrow in this state, it's going to be incredible, the triple header that Brown is telling you about. Uh, we've got a late night game tonight with Sanford looking for that big upset. But Odie's is a great place to break off work, bring the entire office with you, get the ice cold beer buckets, enjoy great food from Rodney Davis. From a corn dog to delicious wings, burgers, Diablo sandwiches, you're going to love it. Two locations, the one we're at right now, the newest in Edgewood, the OG, which is in Crestline. Get in and see Will Haver and that great staff, Odie's Tavern. All right, that's where you watch the games. We're back with you 9 to noon tomorrow, nextroundlive.com. Please give us a thumbs up here. Share this, retweet it, like it, whatever you're doing. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube as well. And make sure you uh, have subscribed on YouTube at Next Round Live and set the alert so you know when we're live for extra shows like this. And our daily show, 9 to uh, noon, every single day. We'll be back Friday, 9 to noon. Emily Grace McWhorter is over in Tuscaloosa. She's about to have Kaylin DeBoer live for you on our uh, platforms here. And uh, check in at Next Round Live for Taylor Korn and all her coverage from up in Spokane with UAB, Alabama, and Auburn. Thank you to the staff and everyone here at Odie's for uh, letting us hang out here for a little bit and talk some basketball with all of you. We'll be live with you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. We'll see you then on the next round.